the land use meeting of June the 17th, 2021. Uh, we will start off um, with the invocation by Commissioner Bellamy and um, go straight into the Pledge of Allegiance, which he will do as well. <laughs> Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us life, health, and strength, and giving us the opportunity to come out and show concerns and show support and find ways to move our county in the best direction in which you would have for us to go. Go with each and every one of us within the sound of my voice, dear Heavenly Father. Watch over us, watch over our family members, our loved ones, and just continue to cover us with your blood and protect us. As we go through the meeting, help us to make sure that we continue to show professionalism and consideration to the individuals that are speaking and the individuals that are representing their different cause. Yes. And all the different things that we go through, we ask you to be in front of us and guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Chair, um, we lost an employee this week. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. Yeah, and I was just wondering if we could at least ask for a moment of silence. Um, Would you like virus. to give any information. I'm not going to give a name because of HIPAA. Maybe um, Reggie will, but uh, maybe he's, but I, I but yeah. yeah. Lawyer. <laughs> no, lawyer. we can. You're not, you're not a caregiver, so. It's okay for it's you. It's all over. The name's on the internet already, so. Right, right. Already I know. I, I, that's why I'm like. like and and what, what I want to do, and I was going to speak about this in, in commission and comments, is um, give, give our heart and prayers out to the Cox um, Strong family. Um, we, we lost Al Cox um, here, here recently, and what, what he was was an individual that um, worked in our IT department, but he also extended his reach out into the community um, at 13th Ave. He was a part of the Mustang Nation. Um, he actually was the initial part of um, starting the baseball program and working with the kids within the basketball and football, and he had a lot of individuals that he impacted and he touched. And it's a very, very, very tough time now. So my heart goes out to his wife, his wife, his daughter, and his two sons, and, they, and obviously their new grandkids. So if it's okay, we just have a moment of silence in his honor. Thank you. Reggie, thank you for that. All right, moving on with our um, agenda. Um, are there any updates to the agenda? Yes, good morning. Item number two, approval and execution of LDA 2001 Logan Development Agreement for Leonard Homes and IA Manatee, revised local development agreement and motion. Okay. Item number three, LDCT 2003 Ordinance 2101 County Initiated Land Development Code Text Amendment Accessory Dwelling Units, Additional Public Comments. Item number five, PA 1805, Ordinance 2115, Ellington Cove, Revised Ordinance to correct, to correct date of signature. Item number six, C 2012, SRP Development LLC, Palmetto Industrial Park, Updates to a Staff Report. Item number seven, PDC 2022, Casto Ellington, No River Village Restaurant, update, including planning commission action and revised recommended motions. And item number A, PDMU 1916, CG, Rye Ranch, LLC, Rye Ranch, update, including planning commission actions and revised alternative motions, revised general development plan, additional public comments, Change, changes to a stipulation, a revised schedule of uses, permitted and prohibited uses, exhibit B of the ordinance, revised ordinance in a straight to order night for format incorporated changes and letter from the party fire department mm -hmm. describing their public private partnership with the applicant. All the above changes are in an update memo and has been attached to the agenda management system. Thank you, Rosina. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead at this time and open uh, citizens' comments for future agenda items. Uh, each person will be limited to three minutes. Uh, if 30 minutes, if that time 
expires, then we will entertain any remaining comments near the end of the meeting with the same three minute per person time limitation. Um, I have three cards here. I don't know if, if you will have a chance if you're not signed up to speak. Uh, the first one is Davina. Thank you, Marusa. Maruka. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, State your name, please. My name is Davina Maruka. Thank you. I am a resident of Manatee County. Uh, my concern at the land meeting has to do with, in the future, how we handle surplus lots. As you know, I spoke on June 8th regarding the surplus lot that was given to a nonprofit. I did a lot of research this week, and it was obvious that surplus land could have been given to a for-profit company as well as a nonprofit. It's not limited under what they were they kept referring to as Choda. We've had a nonprofit or a for-profit since 2014 that has built 14 houses here in Manatee County, all affordable. I've had a nonprofit here since 2013, and never once was the county did any uh, county outreach regarding any surplus lands. And I can tell you, I've made appointments here to talk about surplus lands. And when we were provided one, one lot, it wasn't a buildable lot for the type of affordable home that we were looking for. What I'm asking for is that the commission ask that the, the county department that's in charge of this put together some type of system. On Monday, I wrote an email. I said, I have a for-profit, I have a not-for-profit. I need to meet with someone in order to consider what our options are and what would be required. I've read what my requirements are as a nonprofit. What about the for-profit? Because as we know, even the person that, that built a affordable home had to take it out of the system because there was no cooperation from the county in order to obtain the names. So I've received no response. That's sad. Now I have to keep following up as I did in March. It took three weeks. I followed up again. I was told I would be getting it the next week. I didn't receive anything. And the process continues to be obstructed by the county departments. Something needs to be done about that. And I'm asking that the commission be proactive in making sure that something happens. Thank you. We'll respond to that at the end of public comment. So, you know, April Barnwell, come on down. Please state your name. You'll have three minutes. Hi, my name is April. I'm speaking about the abortion proposal that you're uh, considering. Honey, can you tell us your last name? Oh, Barnwell, April Thank Barnwell. You. Thank you. And I'm speaking about the abortion proposal that you're considering. So just something to think about. For the past four to five years, I've spoken on college campuses about abortion. My favorite topics were rape, rape and life of the mother. Those are actually the least reasons why women have an abortion, less than 1%. The top reason is actually convenience. But I tell them up front that rape is the number one reason why abortions would be illegal. They want to know why, and I convince them. I'm only gonna give you one, and that is a five-year-old girl named Medina. She was found pregnant, the youngest girl to ever be pregnant. At a first semester abortion alone would be traumatic to this little girl's body. The only two choices you have is abortion and C-section. She had a C-section, and she is, she is, so her and her baby were safe. Um, but the thing is, is that if she's pregnant at five, it means she's been raped. If she had not gotten pregnant, <coughs> it means that we will never have known that she had been raped. The pregnancy helped to expose and put us in a position to get her out of that situation. Life of the mother is, the, is even easier to convince students about than rape. But I'm only gonna mention one, and that's the Dublin Declaration. It's a declaration that was signed by several Irish physicians and it states that if a woman is pregnant and she wants to keep her baby, but her life is in danger, that an abortion is medically unnecessary to maintain the well-being and safety of the mother. This is illustrated by my birth. My mom had preeclampsia 
pre-diabetes, complications. She had a small uterus. You couldn't, it was hard to give birth for her. I was supposed to die at pregnancy, and if not at pregnancy, then at birth. Um, or if I'd lived, I was supposed to have mental issues, disabilities, or problems. Um, I did. I was premature. I was nine pounds, and I did stop breathing, and so did my mother. But as you can see, I'm here today, and a graduate of an honors, at an honors college. And so I just want you to consider these things about abortion, because it is destructive to women. And there's so much more I can say, but I will only leave you with that much information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, next is Keith Green. My name is Keith Green, and I'm a Manatee County resident, and I support Commissioner Satcher's amendment, and here's why. My late father encouraged my mother to abort me so he could avoid the responsibility of caring for me. However, my mother gave me the gift of life and raised me as a single parent, and I am grateful for her love, courage, and sacrifice. In the USA Today article from July 2020 titled, Remove Statues of Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood Founder Tied to Eugenics and Racism, opinion contributor and president of Students for Life, Kristen Hawkins, writes the following about the founder of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger. Quote, in, 1939, in a 1939 letter to Dr. C.J. Gamble, Sanger urged him to get over his reluctance to hire a full-time Negro physician as the colored Negroes can get closer to their own members and more or less lay their cards on the table, which means their ignorance, superstitions, and doubt. Sanger urged Dr. Gamble to enlist the help of spiritual leaders to justify their deadly work, writing, we, don't not, we do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population, and the minister is the man who can, strengthen, who can straighten out that idea if ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. Birth control does not mean contraception. Indiscriminately practice, Sanger wrote, it means the release and cultivation of the, be of the better elements of our society. Life begins at the moment of conception. I hope the entire board of, of county commissioners will vote to save the lives of our brothers and sisters in the womb who cannot speak for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. That is the last card that I have on future agenda items. Is there anyone else that would like to come <coughs> forward? I saw that. Please state your name. You'll have three minutes. For the record, Glenn Jubilina, and I support uh, Mr. Statute's uh, motion as well. So uh, a couple of things I want to talk about is... Uh, David is exactly right on the surplus property. I have to tell you, that, that whole cabal needs to be dismantled and really taken a serious, serious look at. That last transaction where we used $150,000 of shipped funds that could have went to six down payments is unconscionable. You really need to look at that um, policy because, one, I don't think it's in the best interest, certainly this taxpayer, uh, and the frustration of getting surplus property. So I just want to bring on a side note that Mr. Becker that was up here last week with his frustration with that department, he gave back his $19,000. He's had it. Wrote a check. You guys checked it. Took it off the market. He tried to work with this county. He'll never work with you guys again because you beat him up so bad. And by the way, he listed it with a realtor. Six hours. It was sold over ASCII. So now he made money, doesn't feel good about it because the whole intent was to keep it affordable. And you, 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 you destroyed that opportunity. So you need to seriously take a look at that. Uh, the other thing I want to I bring up is these big developments, you know, I don't know why we can't uh, have on-site wastewater management treatment. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, every time I look at a lift station or we're pumping out miles and miles and miles of uh, sewer and water line, I see, I see maintenance, I see cost, I see expense, I see a burden on my daughter's tax bill for paying something she's not even going to use. 
you should use the And I did a search. There's plenty of that's you know you guys about ready to prove 5,000 houses. They have their own lift stations. Why would you not want to keep it on the property? So we need to take a look at that. You need to take the best practices of Babcock Ranch. Uh, that water that that water should never leave there. Thir a million a million three acres, and and they're not, and they don't have a lift station. Unbelievable. And lastly, the soccer field. A million two for a soccer field. That could have built 20 beds for homeless vets, but we have to put a soccer field in the middle of nowhere with no public input. How did we come to that decision that we needed a soccer field out in the middle of nowhere? Do you think maybe these 5,000 houses had something to do with it? You need to get your priorities straightened out. We need to move forward with the vets. Uh, and um, Vanessa, thank you. You guys were working hard yesterday. I, I, my hat's off to you, man. You guys have really been working hard the last couple of weeks. Vanessa, thank you for allowing me to speak as well. Thank you, Glenn. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? Please state your name. You'll have three minutes. Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. So Karen, um, so my comments here is um, Karen's pay raise was increased on the day that um, uh, Sherry's uh, contract ended with us. And I wanted to know if that has been reduced back down to what she was currently making prior to um, prior to. Dr. Hope's coming aboard. Um, also, I wanted to find out if anybody has um, looked into the red light camera issue that I brought up last week related to um, removing them. Uh, I know some of the comments up here was that they wanted to um, speak to the sheriff and wanted to find out any more information on that. Uh, surplus property. I agree with Glenn Jabalina and the, the gal here. There was something really wrong with that process that happened a couple years ago and kind of disappointed with this board that you guys didn't stop it and redo it. Um, the soccer fields on 675, um, I know a lot of people in this community are questioning that. Um, I, I spoke to Carol Feltz. Uh, she's curious as to where this came from, who approved it, um, you know, concerned about the money being spent on it. And uh, lastly, there is a, a rally um, out at uh, Courtney Causeway for an anti-abortion rally. I uh, just wanted to inform the people here, um, the residents, if they want to come and join us, I definitely support any heartbeat bill. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else from the public want to come forward? Not seeing anyone. Seth, any phone calls? Madam Chair, if I may, anyone on the line who wishes to I can't to hear you, Seth. I'm sorry. Say it again. Forgive me, Madam Chair. Anyone on the line that wishes to comment, please press star nine to raise your hand. Who's telling people on the phone? Oh, no. 407. Forgive me, it's a 407 area code. 086086. Please press star six to unmute. Hi, caller. Please state your name for the record. This is Ashley Brown. Hi, Ashley. Go ahead. To speak on. I don't know if I'm allowed to speak on the development at Rutland Road and um, Rye Road. No. Is that something else? Until later. Okay. Not all until right. later. Later. All right. Thank you. That's all the calls we have, Madam Chair. That's it? That's all. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead at this time then and close public comment. Um, <clears throat> and moving on down, the, uh, the first item. Um, I thought we were, were going to respond to well, the public comment. All right, Ma Commissioner Cruz. All right, two, two. Sarah, did you want to say something before? Oh, excuse me. I, I was just, the last caller was talking about quasi additional item. Mm -hmm. If she wants to speak, she has to come in person or send written comments. Got I was it. clarifying that, that's all. So, Ashley, if you got that, you have to be in person due to the quasi judicial nature. Or, or written, yeah. if that Emails. does any good at this point. Emails. Uh, okay, two, two quick things on public comment. One, the surplus land, I was the, the biggest proponent to not uh, move forward with that community solutions transaction, as, as people know. Um, I don't think everyone's being ignored on this. We've discussed this probably six times since I got on this board. It's actively being worked on. Uh, this is like turning a tanker. Um, it was an ordinance that I believe was a, a, a poorly, it, it was a well-intentioned 
but, but poorly executed ordinance previously. We have to change the ordinance to allow for for-profit distribution of surplus land. That requires a rewriting of the ordinance and legal opinions and public hearings. It, it's a whole process. We are working on it. I, I'm pretty comfortable. You've got a majority of this board that's on board with opening this up to for-profit. I've made a number of suggestions. As for response, I actually sent a list to uh, sum it up on the ninth floor of available times, whether it be Zoom or in person, so we can meet up and discuss this further. I think you were talking more on land trust, but I'm sure this is a component of it. Uh, I actually have a call in a week and a half on land trust anyway. Maybe we do it right after that. I can give you more information. Uh, so it is being worked on, and I have full faith that it's going to be rectified at some point in time. It's just a matter of getting it done. As for red light cameras, I've been actively working on this on a nearly daily basis. Um, I have looked into the intent of the sheriff on it. I have looked into the existing contracts. I have copies of the original contract, the extension of contracts, everything. I, I've asked specific questions. I'm waiting for answers. Um, it, it expired four years ago. It was renewed by this board for a five-year term, expires October 2022. Uh, I'm looking into what the cost is of terminating it early versus waiting out the 2022 and how that affects things. But uh, it's actively being worked on. It's being researched, and I fully intend to, to have that brought back up in front of this board as soon as I get information. I'm just going to add to that that on the um, surplus lands, I had asked the county attorney's office to look into all that. They are, and there will be a memo coming shortly. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to touch on from public comment. Um, one quick personal note, uh, Keith Green is a friend of mine, and um, I did not know a very personal sh story that he shared, and I just wanted to thank him and, and commend his courage for coming up here and sharing that story. Um, I did know that Margaret Sanger was a vile racist. Um, the, the left tends to try to conceal that and hide it, but I, I'm glad you, you spoke on it because it's often ignored. Um, red light cameras, I'm very glad that Commissioner Cruz has taken the lead on that. That's certainly a countywide issue, so you have my, my support. Um, and then the soccer fields, Glenn, you know, if, <laughs> if we build the houses and we don't have the soccer fields there yet, you know, we're not keeping up with the development and shame on us, but then we build the soccer field because we know the development's coming and you say, you're building the soccer field in the middle of nowhere. What the hell are you doing? Uh, we can't <laughs> win for losing. You know? um, anyway, uh, but I appreciate your comments as always. So. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, I wonder how that'll be in the press. That was good. <laughs> um, Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, a, a, a couple of things, and I'm right where you are um, with the soccer fields. I'm like, hey, look, that's a tough one, you know. It's it's, time. But yeah, and, and, and maybe when it, when everything takes place out there, it's a good that we got soccer fields that the kids can play. Um, I'm also building a relationship with Keith Keith Green, and I do think um, his heart for um, heartfelt. Um, story was, was, was very touching. Um, but I, I need to make sure that I clear some things up on Reggie Bellamy's side um, from, from this. Um, when, when this came up um, a, about the, the, the women's support and the prevention of the crisis and everything like that, I was excited because I thought about the Women's Resource Center and some of the other entities across our county and we discussed in budget in order for, you know, to receive help and support. Um, however, um, I, I, I thought about this, and um, I kind of not listened to a lot of other stuff as relate to it because I know how I am. And we, we've had a very trying year, and it seemed like we're getting ready to go down a turbulent path. I don't have a problem with identifying, you know, my position and where I, where, where I am. Um, here recently we had an issue, and we, we supported property rights. And, and um, I was, I was an advocate of making sure, you know, look, we don't want people on violating people's property rights. And just yesterday, just yesterday, we were talking and trying to find ways to make sure we support animal rights, right? And so if I'm, if I'm going to take and, and be the person that I am um, when we start talking about, you know, property rights and animal rights, me where I am with this right here is that, you know, women's rights are something totally different. And I, I think in me, Reggie Bellamy, as a man, you know, I'm not going to get into an in-depth weeds conversation as when it comes down of discussing women's rights. Now, it may be, you know, something that, you know, gives opportunity for all of us to, everybody's story is different, everybody's opportunity to be educated is a little bit different, and I'm always welcome um, to, to, to receive that. But where, where I am um, right now, 
I think, you know, I would have a problem, and I think every man in here, you know, probably would have a problem if, if, if we had a woman, you know, holding a conversation about our prostate cancer or our erectile dysfunction. Mm. I, think we would have, I think we would have a real issue with that. You know, so I think where, where I am, and, and, and you know, a lot of things change, people change, everything like that, but where, where, where I am, I, I would just, I can't believe I just said erectile dysfunction, but, <laughs> and, and, and that's not a confession, by the way, <laughs> but <laughs> this is going bad fast, I know, right? <laughs> but I do want that to be clear because it touches home, you know, to, to, to men, you know, it, it really touches home to, to, to men as far as, you know, how... You know, we, we have our ways in certain things. We don't want people, you know, in our masculinity. And, and, and I'm sure from a woman's perspective, you know, they have theirs um, so also. And that's just me, and I'm sure we're going to have, you know, some comments and people going to have their thoughts and everything like that. And I don't have a problem listening and, and having an opening, but I'm just letting you know where I am and, 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 and respecting women's rights, and that's probably where I'm going to stay. Take that on whether that makes Oh, that'll make the paper for sure. Yeah, uh, no doubt. That'll be the headline. Uh, <laughs> and that wasn't my intent, but I just need to clear it up. I don't have any other commissioners on the board. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> any other comments from commissioners before I move forward? Kevin, anything you'd like to land use. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying this. Yeah, Commissioner Satcher. <laughs> That's why I asked. I thought, sure, he'd want to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, appreciate it. And... Um, what a, a powerful um, speech by uh, Mr. Green and uh, also a member of the, uh, you know, I'm, I was raised Southern Baptist, so is it called the Knights of Columbus? Okay. Uh, I respect the group. Don't get me wrong. I, so I didn't want to miss the name. Um, yeah, and so uh, respect what they do, the good work that they do. And um, so, and it does seem like... Um, it seems like this might be coming up this meeting regardless of what we do, so that's why I'll, I'll go ahead and speak now. Um, and I don't think that that means that we need to dive off into a 45-minute conversation now. Um, but I will just say that um, I think this is an easy decision. It's an easy time. Um, and I don't plan on um, bringing anything to the board that is um, any more controversial than what it takes to, um, to make a difference and make a stand um, for babies, 50% of whom are female, at least 50%. Uh, but, uh, you know, babies that lose their, lose their life in an abortion are female. I also have gotten emails after email after email um, on every side of this issue. And, but the ones that, you know, I, I've also gotten the, how can you as a man speak to this? And uh, how can you, being a man, have an opinion on this? And of course, my opinion, uh, first of all, was I learned a lot of the reason why I have this opinion from my mother. But, uh, but regardless, um, He lost his keyboard. He lost his keyboard. I'm going to not say what I was going to say. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much. I, this is going to be easy. Um, the controversy is created um, not by standing up for the right thing, but by a few people that um, are on the edges of this issue. So, um, so I don't think we need to have any. I think we need to stick to our guns and. Uh, and stick by and do the right thing. Sometimes courage it takes us, you know, to to do the right thing. It's going to be worthwhile in the end. So that's all I'll say for now. Well, I'm going to be next because I want to respond. I see some heads in the audience. I am a woman, so I can speak to it. Every life is precious. Every life is a real life. Yes, ma'am, I think there are times when it's very sad that you know, a decision has to be made as far as losing one, the mother or the baby. I get it. I, you know, I, I don't take away from that. But at the same time, every time it is a life that we are killing. That's all I'll say. Moving right along. That was mainly for you. 
Um, moving right along, I'm going to go ahead at this point. Anyone that uh, is going to speak in a quasi-judicial hearing, please stand so you can be sworn in. Anyone wishing to speak, please stand at this time. Do you swear or affirm that the factual statements and representations you are about to make to the board are truthful and accurate? Ooh, but that makes Thank you. Sense. When you step to the podium, please state your name and if you've been sworn. All right, the first item that we're going to go to is not a quasi-judicial. It is from the building department. Uh, code enforcement volunteer sign removal program. I'm not sure why that's on land use today, but anyway, come on forward. Good morning. Madam Good Chair morning. Commission, Dr. Hopes, good to see you, sir, the county's attorney's office. My name is John Howard. I'm a field supervisor for code enforcement. The reason that I'm bringing us forward today is to refresh the, uh, the commission that may have heard it and to refresh the, the new county administrator and the new. Can you, how about now? That's Good. The, the new commission and the new administrator with this program that is near and dear to our hearts. Um, basically what it is is a uh, volunteer sign program, snipe sign program, uh, it's removal of signs in the right of way for the county by volunteers throughout the county. Um, we've developed a training program um, the, uh, the potential benefits to the county are we're going to save staff uh, time and money moving forward. Uh, it's going to create spirit. It's going to get the citizens involved also. Um, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of um, uh, concern about these signs at times. Uh, it's going to also foster a positive relationship between my department and the citizens as well. Uh, we're going to move forward with it. With uh, We've developed a training and educational program. We're going to issue some uh, PPE for the individuals that are interested in doing this. And we do have a, a, a small list, uh, 12, 14 individuals that would like to get involved already. Um, we're going to uh, bookmark it. We're going to keep track of what's going on. Um, there's going to be assigned zones. We prefer, assigned zones. We prefer that the individuals that are participating in this volunteer program that they they react around their their the area that they live in uh, or their area of concern and all that stuff we don't want somebody driving from El Conquistor out to the interstate or something like that to, to work on, on items out there um, there will be uh, schedules prepared. We, we want to know where our volunteers are. There's, they'll report to the three supervisors and, and sometimes to the, the senior officers in the field. Um, basically, the, the, we're ready to rock and roll with it. Um, our, next, uh, our next steps would be to advertise the county website. Um, the, the, uh, information outreach through the uh, the PIO and with us doing meetings with the counties uh, or I'm sorry with HOAs and all that that we do um, recruiting volunteers through that program it's uh, in, our, in our opinion it's a win-win situation um, there are some numbers here this was presented originally on January 19th of 2020 by my predecessor, George Martello. Um, great guy and great presentation if you watched. I watched it 20 times. Um, there's a tremendous amount of savings with 14 officers that we have right now. Uh, with the, uh, our procedure is to the first hour every day, we're not gonna be knocking on doors at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we're gonna do what we can without involving the citizens. It's to get out there and pick up these signs so we're not waking anybody up and really starting their day off in a bad situation. Um, we're, our volunteers, or, or us, will uh, go pick up these signs. The volunteers will, contact, at the end of the day, contact a code officer in that zone or near that zone, or even a supervisor, to dispose of them properly. I think Misty, Mrs. Servia uh, had an idea about some recycling or something like that from the, the commission meeting previously. Um, but this this... This program, it, it, it's, its initial savings of up to over $100,000 a year. 
uh, using these volunteers with an initial cost per per volunteer of, and I'm overshooting a little bit, it's a, just under $20 for protective gear and all that stuff. The volunteers also will not be involved in any high risk situations. They're gonna basically be, if they could pull into a gas station parking lot and remove the signs there on the corners there, that's great. That's what we're gonna ask them to do. Um, if it's in the median, that's, that's for the guys with the badges and all that stuff. They can call their zone officer, they can call a supervisor, get somebody out there to do it. But uh, we're, we're ready to pull the trigger on this thing and get it going. That's basically the end of my, converse, uh, my uh, presentation here. Thank, thank you. you. I've got a couple of commissioners on the board. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. And I do support the program, um, but I want you to know I was contacted by Keep Manatee Beautiful um, and they had had some bad experiences with being threatened, um, I guess, by the people who own the signs after they were being removed. And, and so they, I don't believe they're going to participate because of that, because they're concerned about their volunteers. So I would ask that you please reach out to them and talk with them if you haven't already. Absolutely. We, we can do that. And our, our goal isn't to just go start ripping signs out of the ground and all that stuff. I'd like to make contact, and I would ask my volunteers to make contact to whoever owns the signs, mm -hmm. to let to educate them on where they can be and where they can't be. Because um, I, I do believe those things cost a, just a little bit of money. We, we don't want to, you know, just, just waste it for them. Right, and then also in that conversation, they asked about um, liability insurance, and I understand the county is, has sovereign immunity. Um, so I don't know. They are concerned about that as well, though. There, so there was an RLS done, and the county's attorney's stance was there was minimal risk. Okay. Minimal minimal risk. Thank you for reaching out to them. No no Commissioner Whitmore. Well, uh, we have tons of volunteer programs. Look at um, Parks and Recreation. We've got like five or six hundred volunteers, and I'm I'm glad that they want to step up, uh, and. You know, if there's issues like that and the person comes out, say, well, just put it on your property because I can't go on your property so just or just lay it in their yard, but don't go on the property, you know. So um, I'm glad that, and there are some volunteers who will want to actually do that. We just have to make sure they don't get a little overzealous. And um, I did look at your slideshow on what, what they can pick up. So um, I think it's something we should try. And um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But we tried. This was... Um, asked for by the citizens as well as um, code enforcement. So I think we should give them a shot and let them try. We'll, we'll make sure that, the, that our volunteers know exactly what they're doing. And, is if, and if there is a question, that they will call a supervisor. Well, you have a training, too. Right? We, have, we have an extensive yeah, training program that. as well. Um, do you but need it, an it, action? No. Is there an no action? action. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Is that it? So that's it. Okay. Go, I, go for uh, it. No, Commissioner um, Shank. I'm sorry, yeah. Attorney Shank. Shank. Oh, Commissioner. Uh, it's going to be a pay cut. So I know. You know it's going to be a major pay cut for major you. Major pay cut. Yeah. Major pay cut. I was wondering, actually, why the light had gone out on the, on oh, the thing. Yes. That's I just wanted to clarify. Was. Yes, so requests for the ghost service have been submitted, and one of the PowerPoint presentations does have a form of a volunteer agreement. It appears to follow a standard form, but the volunteers are at their own risk. But I think the key is the training that the presenter indicated. They have to have their training. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other commissioners on the board. Thank you very much. All Do right. I need to open this, Madam uh, Attorney, to public comment? Well, you took no action, so yeah. no. Okay. Good. We can move forward. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Have a good day. All right. The next one is a quasi-judicial item. It's presentations upon request. Rosina. Item number two, approval and execution of LDA 2001 Local Development Agreement, Linear Homes, LLC, and AI Manatee, LLC, PLN 2007-0071, Quasi Judicial, and Mr. Clark Davis is uh, representing the staff. All right. Um, before we move forward, commissioners, has there been any ex parte communication? Not seeing any. Okay. Clark, how are you, I'm, sir? I'm well, thank you. Uh, good morning. For the record, my name is Clark Davis. I'm Deputy Director of Traffic Management for Public Works, and I have been sworn. Uh, as Ms. Leiter indicated, uh, this is the second of 
two public hearings for LDA 20-01 at the local development agreement. It is scheduled for presentations upon request. What is the board's pleasure in terms of content this morning? pleasure of the board. Do we need a full presentation? Um, I move approval of LDCT-20-03. Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Servia, a second yeah. by Commissioner Cruz. Uh, before we can vote, I need to open this to comments, public comment. Anyone in the public or here today want to speak on this item? Not a soccer field, Glenn. <laughs> Carol, ten years. Ten years. We're finally there. Thank you. What are you going to say after this? We bring it up every meeting. I know. Anyone else from the public want to come forward? I don't Not seeing anyone. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, you have the motion. Are you okay? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. It is approved, Madam Clerk, unanimously. Thank you. All right, moving right along to presentation scheduled advertised public hearings. Rosina. Item number three, LDCT 2003, Ordinance 2111, formal note as Ordinance 2015, County Initiative Law Development Code, Text Amendment, Accessory Dwelling Units, ADUs, BLN 20020090 is a legislative case. Mr. Bill O'Shea is representing um, staff and is amending the Land Development Code but amended Chapter 2 definitions to provide definition for accessory dwelling units and obscure glass. Amending Chapter 4 by adding accessory dwelling units as a specific use in Section 401.2, Table 401, Table 412, and amending section 401.3 by adding language to section 4031132 with for residential overlay to prohibit the construction of an ADU, amended chapter 5, a standard for accessory dwelling units and structures, and create a new section 511.18, accessory dwelling units, Prohibiting ADUs in the Bayshore Garden Park and Recreational District and amended map 5.5, providing that accessory dwelling units shall not be considered dwelling unit for density calculations, amending section 531.32C1 mobile homes, amended chapter 10, transportation management, section 1005 of street parking radius, and Bill, you can proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Madam Chairman, um, Commissioners, Dr. Hopes, Madam County Attorney, Bill O'Shea presenting for the Building and Development Services Department. Um, we're here today to talk about the latest draft of the Accessory Dwelling Unit Ordinance. And I apologize in advance, some of this will be repetitious for the board, but I thought it was important to um, include it for the public's benefit. So currently, Manatee County allows guest houses, which are structures that are accessory and subordinate to a residential use, and by that we mean it only has to be less than one square foot, uh, or one square foot less than the primary structure. Um, it cannot have a full kitchen, um, full-time occupancy or rental is not allowed, and it's a use by right in residential zoning districts with no parking, no parking requirement, and essentially the property owners can apply for a building permit and can construct one if approved. There can be, however, um, homeowners association restrictions that would preclude the ability to construct a uh, guest house in a residential area. So what is an accessory dwelling unit? It can be attached or detached to the primary dwelling unit. It is subordinate and separate from the primary dwelling unit. It has full kitchen and bathroom facilities. It must be held in common ownership with the principal dwelling, and it is not considered in density calculations. Here's a few examples. There's actually a fourth one, so you would have attached to the main house. You could have a detached single story. 
you could have a detached above a garage, or you could have a attached above on the second floor of a of a existing house. And I have some pictures to show you examples. So this is the first story attached. The ADU is on the end of the structure. This would be an attached second story ADU over the garage. This is a detached single story in the rear of the property. And this would be a, a detached above garage unit. So there has been a lot of work done on ADUs over the past 10 years. There's been many versions of the ordinance. Um, we've spoke with other jurisdictions and looked at their regulations. We've solicited input from county departments and agencies. Um, and we continue to work and refine the ordinance as directed by the board. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but this is the list. As you can see, we've had several um, outreach events and opportunities for the public to see and review what we've been doing. This is the first reading today. If we um, have no major changes to make, we would um, come back before you in August, on August 19th for the adoption hearing. So I just wanted to bring you up to speed from where we were um, in December. So on December 10th, we were holding the adoption hearing for the accessory dwelling units. The board had changed, and, and the board asked to make further revisions to the ordinance and bring it back as a, for further discussion as a report. We were also directed to work with Commissioner Cruz on that draft. So we did work with him, and as a result of our meeting with C Commissioner Cruz, there were three remaining issues that we needed to discuss. So on March 4th, we came back with a report to you. The three remaining issues were the sunsetting of guest houses, the number of bedrooms, and impact fees. Um, the board decided not to sunset guest houses, not to limit the number of bedrooms, and we decided to address impact fees with either the impact study, fee study or at a later time. So I'd like to go through with you the changes to the code that are proposed to allow um, accessory dwelling units. In the definition section, we've added a definition for an accessory dwelling unit in obscure glass. We're amending table 4.1 and 4.12 to allow um, ADUs as a use in specific zoning districts. And as just so you're all aware, we have many, many planned development communities that have been approved throughout the county. ADUs was not a use established um, in any of those um, ordinances, zoning ordinances. So if an existing PD desires to have accessory dwelling units, they would have to come back to the board and add it as a use. Um, it adds a prohibition on ADUs within the Bayshore Gardens Park and Recreation District, and I have a map to show you further on in the um, slide presentation. It amends Section 403 to prohibit ADUs in the Whitfield Residential Overlay. It adds Section 511.18, which is basically the standards and where you can have them. It does require the property owner to occupy either the dwelling unit, the accessory dwelling unit, or the primary structure. Um, what we decided on square footage wise is to limit the square footage to a 750 square foot max in the RSF, PD, and village zoning districts, 1,000 square feet or 80% of the primary dwelling unit in A and A1. There is a provision in there that provides for a five or 10 foot rear yard setback reduction in exchange for height restrictions and added privacy. Um, it limits each conforming lot to one guest house or one ADU. It requires an off street dedicated parking space. It requires compliance with the Florida building code and it requires that a notice to buyer be recorded at the applicant's expense so that future owners know that they cannot sell that separately um, from, from the uh, property. It also allows for mobile homes to be used as an ADU only in the A zoning district. 
and it amends Table 10-2 to require the one parking space for ADUs. And finally, this is the map that will be in the Land Development Code for the Bayshore Gardens Park and Recreation District. The area in red is the area that would not be eligible for ADUs. They would be prohibited within this area. That concludes my presentation, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Whitmore. Okay, Glenn. I respectfully ask the board that when it's time that I make the motion on this one, respectfully. And then I do have one question. Um, we've had a citizen quite frequently um, bring up that uh, they want, I saw mobile homes on here, and they have a, I want to say travel trailer, but it's not, you know. Uh, like a camper? Like a, yeah, a camper like a truck wheel? or whatever, and they want to rent that out. And uh, they've been told they can't. This does not comply because you still have to meet uh, building codes, correct? Correct. Okay. You I would just not be able to use a an RV as a, an accessory dwelling unit. Thank you. Because <laughs> well, I'm not even thinking of an RV because that's probably better than a lot of homes. But but just the little campers um, mm -hmm. wanting to rent them out that is not allowed. It's that not is, allowed now, and they're no. upset about it. They're thinking, I want to make sure that if they're watching that they know that this is not allowed either with this ADU. That's correct. And I believe there is a section of the code that addresses you, the use of the ADU, or I'm sorry, any kind of recreational vehicle on, on private property. I don't believe you can even have it connected to water or electricity without being in violation of the code. Thank you. And I want to thank Commissioner Cruz for meeting with staff. I'm fine with uh, your negotiations or your... They all make sense, and um, I love the square feet, and I'm glad we worked it out on larger areas in A and A1 to allow, it makes more sense also. So thanks for everybody's hard work, and since, as you saw, since 2017, you said longer, but I, it's 2017, we've actually been going forward on this. So thank you very much, and thank you for taking the lead on this since you got back into the planning department speaking before us. You've done a good job. Thank you. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I'm going to echo what Commissioner Whitmore said. This has been going on for years. We finally got to a point where we have uh, we have something in writing that we're all okay with. We've discussed every last bullet point of this. I, you know, I would, you know, I would request we just allow Commissioner Whitmore to, to make this motion and get, start moving towards that second <laughs> because I, I don't want something to derail it because every other time this has come up, someone said something, something's happened, and then we go back to another two-year process of Amen. figuring out whether or not there's certain opaqueness of windows that need to be put on these things. Just <laughs> we should let her just make the motion so we can oh, move action. this forward and get this approved. There's so. no action required. Dang, I want the second, okay. the second yeah. hearing. I just looked it up. Uh, attorney, uh, oh, yeah, I just, yes, yeah. Yeah, I just want ahead. to clarify, while there's no action required on number three, after you hold your hearing for citizen comment, number four just requires the motion to allow the second public hearing to be held prior to 5 p.m. So there's one vote, but it's a that. procedural motion later. Okay. Okay. I'm, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Don't Madam it. Chair. <laughs> um, I, I want to weigh in with my support for this as well. I did reach out to the a member of the Association of Realtors, and I did reach out to them, uh, and they sent all of you a letter basically explaining Excellent. that we have two weeks of housing supply in Manatee County as of right now. Um, obviously, we have a shortage of affordable and workforce housing, and this, I don't know that we're going to see a surge of these, but it at least does help us inch towards, you know, giving, diversifying uh, your housing options in Manatee County yeah. and helps a lot of folks who aren't able to afford to go oh, yeah. out and rent an apartment um, or uh, rent a house or buy a house. It gives them gives them another option, and I think that's really the whole point. And some people are having trouble making their mortgage, and so maybe this helps them to bring in a little additional mm -hmm. income and stay, keep their family in their home as well. So mm -hmm. I'm very supportive, as is the association. So thank you, Madam Chair. All right, I don't have any other commissioners on the board. I'm going to go ahead and open this to public comment. I have a, two cards, Alan Goldsmith, and after Alan is Davina, and you'll both have three minutes. Hmm? Good morning, commissioners. My name is Alan Goldsmith. I'm a resident of Manatee County, and I have been sworn. Um, I'm going to read a letter. Uh, I believe we sent initial correspondence in August. Uh, so I will be representing District 4 Citizens Coalition on Growth. 
The District 4 Citizens Coalition on Growth is a group of residents that meet monthly to discuss growth-related issues affecting our county. Our group is made up of individuals with different backgrounds who reside in different areas of District 4. We have reviewed the proposed ADU ordinance and offer the following comments. We recommend the size of the ADU should be 600 square feet. We recommend each ADU provide an additional off-street parking space dedicated. We recommend that the unit match the main home in architectural style and material. And we recommend that the proposal be limited to residential single family zoned areas with a quarter of an acre only or above. It's our hope that this new ordinance will be implement, implemented in a way that neighborhoods maintain their character and charm. Thank you for the opportunity to express our input on this important addition to our land development code. And this was unanimously adopted and was submitted by Norm Lupino. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning again, Davina Maruka. Um, I wanted to make a comment because we do own Florida Manufactured Home Dealer. And as a dealer of manufactured home and modular homes, perhaps I need to kind of take you down the road of what's the difference between a mobile home and a manufactured home. Because of course, RVs are not, we are not uh, anchored. When we do a manufactured home, there's a four foot anchor every four feet. Right. And that's how we get our wind zone two. That's how we have 130 mile per hour um, strength against hurricanes. So the difference between an RV, a mobile home, and a manufactured home is quite different. And I understand that mobile homes are only going to be allowed in section A now. Now, but a, a mobile home will be set, or a manufactured home, they don't even call it mobile homes anymore. Uh, a manufactured home would be set with the four, an four feet anchors into the ground. It's a very large anchor, very large. Um, for the homes, for the other areas though, modular homes can work. So what they produce is a manufactured home or a modular home, uh, either one can work and usually either plan can be put there. So during COVID, we saw a lot of people having to move home, having to um, maybe have grandparents come home to help because they were trying to work and school and everything else. And we saw a lot of people probably aggregating as extended family. So obviously this helps during that type of of situation where they had to downsize. Um, ADUs are flexible. They provide quality housing. Uh, you, you should see some of the units we've put up because um, much nicer than many apartments or many homes that you see today. So we are asking you to support this, particularly support modular homes that can be placed in the back. Those are park models or the smaller houses and um, do know that those are easy to set on knee walls as a modular home. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to come forward? State your name, sir. You'll have three minutes. Max Berendo with the Realtor Association of Sarasota and Manatee. Uh, sorry about not filling a card. I didn't, I didn't find them out there. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to retread a bunch of topics. You guys have got my letter. You guys know where we stand on it. We support the ADUs. Uh, it's, gonna, it's going to diversify the housing stock. It's going to allow for multi-generational living. Um, and I think while I have this time, I just want to stress how low supply levels are. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Commissioner Van Austin Bridge was right on. It's about two weeks. So that's hard for Manatee County residents on fixed income, Manatee County residents that are first time home buyers. So, you know, it's not gonna solve the problem, but it's going to be a good tool for homeowners to improve their property, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing it get done. So thanks for all your work. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Anyone else? Glenn Julian, for the record, uh, I want to thank Bill O'Shea and his team. They did a, a home run job, I have to tell you. They, they worked with the Affordable Housing Board. They addressed all the, all the citizens' comments and their issues. So uh, he put a lot into it, and uh, we're finally come to fruition. I do want to talk about... Uh, 
the modular and the, and the mobile home. So, you know, if I go to Sun and Fun and I want to stay less than six months, I pull in my fifth wheeler or my park, mo- uh, not the park model, but my mobile home, and I sit there. If I go six months in one day, it has to be on a foundation. Mm-hmm. Same unit. So I, I don't know what the big deal is. You know, they come in with these big screws and they screw them down and there's your hurricane ties. You're restricting property rights if someone has a really, really nice fifth wheeler and wants to park it out in AG and put the hur- and put the screws in and they've got the sewage and water capacity. Why can't the homeowner do that? They, I mean, what's the difference of that fifth wheeler sitting out there with nobody in it versus somebody in it Terrible. if it is if it is grounded properly and i and i will tell you the manufacturer homes from 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 uh, palmer and some of the other ones their their home runs if you if you go look at some of the uh, hurricanes that came through the new mobile homes meet this meet the codes mm-hmm. they're pretty stout and the modular you know they're even stouter uh, and the other thing i want to bring up the tiny homes so you got a tiny home, it's on a trailer, it's, 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 it's regulated by the transportation department. They want to make sure the lights work and the brakes work. But that same tiny home built the Florida codes, and more and more tiny home builders are meeting the Florida building codes because they see an opportunity that if I pull that in the backyard, I have two options. I can get the hurricane straps and meet code, or I can pull the trailer off because most of them, uh, you can take the trailer out from under them. So... You know, there's opportunity there. I think the, the tiny house market is ready for a higher density, is ready to be uh, in complements with the accessory dwelling units. So I think that's the next hurdle after this, this ADU gets passed. But, again, hats off to, to Bill and his team. Thank you. Anyone else from the public want to come forward? All right, this is a legislative item. Um, is there anyone on the phone? Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and close public comment. Bill, are you going to take us to number five or what? Um, before we, we go to number motion. five, I just wanted to address a few of the public okay. comments. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the the 600 square foot um, floor area, we have been there and the board has directed us to increase the square footage. I think that is was the recommendation of AHAC as well. Um, the quarter acre or more, That's a, this is the first time that we've considered um, that, but it would definitely reduce the number of areas in the community where ADUs could be um, built. And I'm going to try to take a stab at the mobile home, modular home, RV issue. Um, you. you know, I've talked to Stephanie Rossi about it, the building official, and um, there's different, a modular home has has um, an inspection process built into the manufacturing. So I believe that they could be used as an ADU um, in the residential zoning districts. Mobile homes go through a, a process as well, but they don't meet Florida building code or they don't meet it as well as modular homes. RVs are licensed by the Department of Transportation. There is no inspection by the county and there is, um, it's to a lesser standard because they weren't made to be full-time occupied. And park models are, in the Florida statute, is for temporary uses only. They, too, are designed to a different standard and, and certified by a different agency than, than modular homes. So I, I don't think that those are options. Currently, um, the Land Development Code only allows mobile homes to be used in A. That's why we recommend that perhaps we could use them in the A zoning district. You have to have a five acres or more in order to use a mobile home. So there's very limited circumstances. It would be mostly in the agricultural area of the county where you could use a mobile home. All right, Bill, I couldn't agree with you, with you more on that. You are going to open us, I'm assuming, to number uh, five. But before you do, I do have commissioners on the board. So I just wanted to know if you were just going to move on. For, that's why I was asking. Definitely. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I'm going to be quick. Uh, I've heard everyone talk about the, the smaller sizes and, and different structures and whether or not we use fifth wheels. And, and th- th- this ordinance took 
years to put together, and it was a perfect and well done example of give and take. There was a lot of negotiation of we don't want a bedroom, but we'll we don't want to restrict bedrooms, but we'll we'll add a parking space, and we want certain sizes and certain windows. This was. You know, an ordinance years in the making that that everything's been discussed from from mobile homes to to smaller sizes to larger lots. You know, the hard part is getting this ordinance on the books, and, and we're at this point. We can have other we're having discussions about impact fees at a later date. You now, I, I would encourage anyone, especially people in favor of the ADU, to let, let's get this ordinance on the books. Let's start using this ordinance. We can always tweak things down the road if it comes up where we we realize something's wrong, but. You know, going back to the drawing board is, I don't think, is in the best interest of Manatee County or the people who could desperately use these ADUs right now. Commissioner Whitmore. And Max, um, thank you for uh, your comments. I have a house across the street from me um, that was built in the 40s. It, uh, the, it went on sale um, Monday and it was sold Tuesday for $1.7 I mean, it's ridiculous, and a couple of doors down, a gentleman wasn't even selling his house. He got a call from somebody, and they offered him so much money that he took it. So I, I don't really know what's going on. I know it's going to all calm down, but it is don't nuts worry. right now. So that's why we've later. decided not to sell our house right now, because there's no place to go <laughs> unless you want to make a decision in a day. So we're waiting until it cools down a little bit. But... Um, also, the six month and six month and a day, six month from what my history is on the island, is if it's six months and below, then it's not a resident. Correct. Six months plus, then you're a resident. And that's how we determine vacation rentals on, well, everybody does, but um, that's how I've always been told. And I just want to confirm something with somebody I'm right, right? Yeah, that's why. If it's less than six months a day, that's why you pay sales Yeah, tax you're temporary, you're not, you're not a resident, you can't, okay, good. Um, so, um, you know, appreciate all the comments. Let's get this done. And uh, so we do have to make a motion to continue to another public hearing, correct? That's the next item that Bill's number going to five. Talk well, about. we don't, I can just make a motion to approve the recommended motion and item number five to bring it to another public hearing, correct? I'm not there yet. Second. Madam Chair, Commissioner Whitmore, it's item number four. That's what I thought. She kept saying, yeah, say it, well, you know why? Because on our action, in it doesn't say item. we need to have an action to make a second public hearing. Um, that's why probably the chair thought that. But yeah, there's no nothing in our recommended motions to say that. But I'll make a motion that we um, continue this to a second public hearing. And I don't know, Madam Attorney, if there's a date. No, there's no continuance. August if I may permit just to read the motion. Yeah, read the, the motion. Next, number four, just it's for not on our agenda. Thank you. I move to hold the item. second public hearing to adopt proposed ordinance 2111, FKA ordinance 2015 on August 19th, 2021 at 1 o'clock p.m. where soon thereafter as may be heard in lieu of after 5 p.m. pursuant to section 125-66-4B1 Florida statutes. This motion requires at least five votes to pass. So, uh, so moved. <laughs> Do we have a second? I seconded it. Okay. So everyone knows this is listed in the next item, and it also states that this motion requires at least five votes to pass, just so everyone knows. So. Um, in item number what? I'm sorry. I didn't number four. Right. This is just to hold the public hearing prior to right. 5 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Attorney Shank, did you have anything else to no. say? No. No. Okay. All right. So all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. It is approved unanimously. You've got your five votes. Thank you. We'll see you on August 19th. Need One your more time. agenda. It says no action. I know. I know. Okay, so moving right along. Now to number five. Item number five. PA 1805, Ordinance 2115, Ellington Cove, Large Scale Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment. PNN 18030014 is a legislative case, a privately initiated map amendment to the future land use map of the future land use element to designate a specific real property located on the south-south of Mendoza Road and west of I-75 at 50057th Street, East Palmetto, Florida, 
from the REST3 residential three dwelling units per acre future land use classification, 80.82 acres, to the REST6 residential six dwelling units per acre, 30 acres, and residential nine, nine dwelling units per acre, 50.82 acres, future land use classification. The case manager is Mr. Charles Andrew and Ms. Barreiro and Ms. Clara. He is represented the applicant. Oh. Mr. Rudolph still. <laughs> Sorry. I was wondering. I was, yeah. Hey, Scott, come on down. Good to see you. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Scott Rudisil, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Um, if you'll recall, we were here a few weeks ago on this application for transmittal. Um, this is a map amendment uh, for approximately 81 acres uh, located at the southwest corner of Mendoza Road and I-75, um, proposing a map amendment from Res 3 to Res 6 and Res 9. Um, we did do a full presentation at Transmittal, which we're happy to do another presentation today. It will be remarkably similar to the one that we did in April, but uh, uh, we're happy to do it if the board would like to hear it. Um, Otherwise, we're happy to answer any questions. No. Why, why um, Commissioner Cruz. Just uh, real quick, maybe this is more a question for Carol. Um, we had potentially, or I potentially discussed, um, taking advantage of the density bonus closer to I-75 in exchange for the affordable housing. I thought it was beneficial. I don't know if you guys looked into that and just decided not to do it. I mean, you have every right to do whatever you want, but I was just curious if that was looked into. Do you? Uh, I, that is not really a product that this particular okay. developer does, but. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Clark for the record, Medallion Home. Um, we did actually, after the hearing um, uh, back in April, um, looked at that and looked at, um, frankly, something, I'm going to say my bad, that I did not realize because um, this application was brought in initially in 2018 and this opportunity did not exist. But this property is located at a mixed-use activity node um, and we will be asking for more density on the site plan than we had initially thought when we initially submitted. So we're asking for more density and also more the potential for more commercial because of the what we have heard about wanting to increase the mix of uses. So we are going to be asking for more units than we were initially proposing because we're an activity node. Commissioner Servia? Yes. Um, can you please tell us if you received any comments from the state of Florida and what they were? Um, we did receive, Carol Clark again, and I have been sworn. Um, we did receive some comments. Um, the Department of Equal economic opportunity, um, I'm dating myself. Um, uh, their comment was no comment. Um, we had several, I uh, think Swift Mud and DOT offered technical comments, but there were no objections and no real substantive Thank comments. You. Commissioner Bellamy? No, I was just, when it's time to make the recommended motion, I'll make it. All right, well you can go ahead and do that if you like. i make the recommended motion. Second. She was louder, just so you know. <laughs> All right, I've got to open this to public comment. Um, anyone from the public want to come forward on this item? It is a legislative item if anyone wants to call in. Glenn Jablina, for the record, thank you, Madam Chair, staff, Dr. Hopes. Here we go again, giving out density bonuses like Candy on Halloween. Candy on Halloween. When are we ever going to get it? That's a privilege. It's not a right. He is zoned for our three units per acre. That's it. Medallion Homes does not build affordable housing. So if they want to play, let them pay. They're asking for an additional 480 units. Go back to the developer and say, in the long run, what do you think that's worth? I guarantee it's worth at least 10000 a unit. So that's what this county should be charging. You want to up the density to RF9? You want to add that? You're not entitled to it. <clears throat> You're only entitled to it if you give affordable housing, 
This developer is unwilling to do that. In fact, this developer has never built one square foot of affordable housing. Just takes and takes and takes. Density bonus exactly is, is a bonus. If we get nothing in return, then why are we even here? Why just give it to them, don't even have a hearing, don't even talk to the public because you're gonna do it anyways. I'm just telling you, there is value in the density. The developer knows that. He's got it built into his profit margin. So where, where is the line where I'm gonna not build it if, if the density bonus cost is too much, or I'm gonna build it if the county is reasonable to build it? Zero is not reasonable. If you gave them 10,000, we'd get $4.8 million for affordable housing. Those are the kind of funds that we need. And look where this is. This is right by the Ellington Mall. Do you think entry level service workers at Publix can afford eleven, twelve hundred dollar a month rents? And that's exactly what this developer is going to do. He has set nothing aside for affordable rents. It's a density bonus, it's not a density gift. So as soon as we start realizing that he would gladly pay for the bonus, but we're not asking, it's time to do the ask. Anyone else from the public want to come forward? All right, not seeing anyone. You don't have anyone on the phone, sir? All right, we'll close public comment. We do have a motion by Commissioner Bellamy, a second by Commissioner Servia. All in favor There's say aye. There's questions on oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. D. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. I just want to clarify for the record and make sure I understand by asking Rosina a couple of questions. Has a density bonus been requested, or is this a MAP amendment to change a future land use category? It's a, it's a amendment to change the future land use category. And the future land use category has, you know, the options like Ms. Clark mentioned, you know, that if you do mixed use, you can increase the density. Right. Or so if you propose affordable housing, you can increase the density. So because we define those terms, um, density bonus, I say this to Mr. Uh, Gibellina, that's something different from a future land use map amendment. So I, I just wanted to clarify that I understood that correctly. This is a change in future land use category yes. and, that uh, does allow more density, but it is not a density bonus as we define it. And after that, the applicant has to come back with the application with a preliminary site plan or general development plan and rezone the property because right now is uh, no. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted yeah, to make yes. sense. You know. Page. Thank you. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I'm okay with the project, but I just want to make sure we, we are all on the same page. That's the most government answer to whether or not there's a density bonus. It, it, it's an R3. What you're saying is if they come in here and ask for R6, then it's density bonus. If they come in here and ask us to change the zoning to R6 before they ask for R6, then it's no longer density bonus because now they're just asking for what they get. But they only get it because they asked us to change it to that in the first place before they asked for it. Well, let's let's re realize what it is. And I, again, I'm okay with the project. I'm not speaking to the project because it's, it's a place for density. But at the end of the day, it's a density bonus. So they're just, it, we're, we're changing the, the zoning before we give the density that's higher than the density they can get today before we change the zoning, which is the same thing. Commissioners, any other comments before we go to the motion? Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Bellamy, a second by Commissioner Servia. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. It is approved unanimously. Thank you. Okay, number six. Um, Madam Chair, I just had a procedural comment on, um, I just wanted to say for the record, on number eight on Rye Ranch, Commissioner Whitmore did receive the final order of dismissal of the ethics complaint, so she will, will be allowed to vote on that. So we have a Hallelujah. full board for number eight. And one general comment, item six, Palmetto Industrial Park, seven, North River Village Restaurant, eight, Rye Ranch, or quasi public hearings, and as you know, we have to follow certain procedural rules. And it would be far better legally if the board doesn't make any motions to approve or deny until we Til get through our order of the list. The chair is going through each step. Yeah. There's a reason for that. She's been advised by council to do that. 
after the applicant's rebuttal is deliberation and vote. And I respectfully request you to follow that order. Madam Thank Chair, you, Attorney uh, Shank. Attorney's yes, comments. Um, this has been the second or third opinion from the actual board since I've been in office. And it's also been the, uh, we've had three opinions that went up to the state that they just submitted that nothing's changed and we had gotten something like that. So it's happened at least five times since I've been in office. So this again reaffirms and um, just wanted to make sure that's clear. And Mr. Holmes called me. We knew we both got the uh, letter that, uh, before it came out in public. Yeah, he wanted me to know that he'd gotten it too. So yeah, I don't, hey. It, it makes me, uh, if somebody's going to question, I want to do things legally, I have no problems. I responded, and I didn't get an attorney this time. I just wrote it all uh, up because it's happened so many times and nothing's changed. So I'm glad that chapter is behind me, but um, thank you very much. Poor Scott. <laughs> all right, Rosina, number six, please. Item number six. C-2012, SRP Development, LLC, Palmetto Industrial Park, SRP Development, LLC owner, PLN 2008-0008, and it's a quasi-judicial case. It's a result of more or less 38.32 acres from A1 Agriculture Sud Urban to LM Line Manufacturing Zoning District for property located north of 17th Street East, commonly known as Memphis Road, and south of 21st Street East, more or less 1,200 feet east of US 41 Palmetto. The case manager is Mr. Kevin Oldman. He is on vacation and going to be represented by Mr. Marshall Robinson. And the applicant is Mr. Cavoli here, uh, ready for his presentation. All right, I'm going to go ahead before we get started and ask, do all commissioners have the items that shows the listing for moving forward on quasi-items? Yes. I just want to make sure so that there's no questions about it. Any uh, ex parte communications, commissioners? All right, and George told me before he moved away that he had not had any. So, applicant presentation. Hello. Good morning, commissioners. John Cavoli, Cavoli Engineering, and I have been sworn. Um, I'll try to be brief. Uh, this is a straight rezone from an A1 zoning district to IL, which is supported by the future land use. Um, I put up on the overhead the uh, current zoning map and the future land use map. Um, there's currently uh, IL surrounding port parts of this property as well as residential to the north and the south. Um, we're in conformance with the um, comp plan regarding this. Um, the proposed project, um, just for your information only, because again, it is a straight route zone, um, the client's proposing an industrial park, which is a needed demand in the area, and so therefore we're trying to be in conformance with the comp plan and propose uses that are in conformance with that. We've gone through um, with all the different departments. Uh, there's no uh, demand by this rezone to be put on the infrastructure of the community. There's already water and sewer to the area. Uh, access will be from the south to minimize impact um, or perceived impact to the residential areas to the north. Um, we've coordinated with stormwater management. There's a wetland in the northeast corner. We are not going to impact that. Um, and we're maintaining the north-south ditch going through the property. There's one existing crossing. We're going to be using that. Um, so, realistically, we ask for your approval of this reason. Yeah. Got any questions on here? Um, commissioners, any questions for the applicant? I, I do. Um, sorry, I didn't have time. I am, well, sorry. do you want me to now? No. Okay. I just um, would you consider everyone. this an infill project? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's what I wrote on my notes. Okay. And it says Woodruff is the agent? Um, Somewhere? Woodruff was the, uh, or is was the owner of the property oh, and they okay. are selling it to my client who's going to develop it into an industrial park got it okay um it to me it's a good infill project so um but i wanted you to confirm that it was yes I'm only allowed it to sure ask is questions. thank you <laughs> all 
All right, I don't see any other commissioners on the board, so we're going to go ahead and move forward to staff presentation. I'm assuming that's Marshall. Yes, there he is. Good morning, commissioners. Marshall Robinson, Development Services. And a lot of the information I have was covered by Mr. Cavoli. He worked out of the staff report, and I did as well. Um, to put this presentation together. Uh, the property is uh, located north of 17th Street East, uh, which is Memphis Road, and south of 21st Street East is uh, approximately 1,200 feet east of Highway 41 in Palmetto. It's in the industrial light future land use category with a zoning of A1 or agricultural suburban, and the project area is about 38 acres. The request is to rezone the 38 acres from agricultural suburban to light manufacturing. Uh, we did pull the table from the Land Development Code, and we can see here that light manufacturing, which is the proposed zoning district, is an implementing district of the industrial light feature land use category. The site was designated as A1 uh, with the adoption of the Land Development Code in 1990. The maximum FAR for the IL is 0.75 on the 38 acres. Uh, we've got some Res 6 and some industrial light that surround the project. We also see off to the east, we have some city jurisdictional property as well. Here's the zoning map. We've got some PDR to the north, some light zoning with LM to the southwest and to the east boundary. Uh, to the south, we have some single-family residential zoning districts along with some more A1 zoning. Uh, this is just a rundown through some of the development standards. There will be a 10-foot roadway buffers on Memphis and 21st Street East. We will also have landscape buffers along the east boundary and the southwest boundary, and these buffers will be subject to Table 7-4 of the LDC, depending on the use that comes in for development. That will determine the, uh, the amount of buffer widths and screening that will be required there. If we have like uses with what's on either side of the project, uh, there won't be any uh, buffering requirements. However, if they do locate some parking there, we'll get an opportunity to get some eight-foot vehicle use area buffering along those uh, sections of those uh, side boundaries. We've got a 30-foot landscape buffer requirement to the, uh, to the northwest. This is where we have some multifamily in the PDR. 75-foot setbacks that cover down across the single family zoning districts to the northeast and to the southwest. Then we also have a 25-foot setback requirement uh, along Memphis Road and along uh, 21st that cover down over top of the, uh, the multifamily and non-residential zoning districts. And then last, we'll have 20-foot setbacks along the side properties. It should be noted that um, Section 531 Point four seven um, does allow a single-family detached dwelling in the IL future land use category. <clears throat> it's just worth noting that there are some certain criteria that it that it has to meet in order to do that. Most notably, being a lot of a lot of record. And that is my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. <clears throat> All right, um, we're going to go ahead right now and open to public comment. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on this item? It is a quasi-item, so we cannot go to the telephones. Not seeing anyone. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions? Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, um, this, is, this is almost somewhat of an emotional time for me because I see development coming to an area that I frequent as far as riding by. I've, I've talked to the people that deal, dealt with the bees out there. I've obviously called Palmetto Police Department one time. One of the cows <coughs> got on the other side of, of, of the fence, and, and now we're getting ready to develop it. But it's it's obviously an opportunity, and it's, and it's appreciated because it could potentially bring jobs um, to that immediate area. So, again, that's that economic um, development piece when you start developing it. I kind of look forward do to you, seeing it. Do you have any questions, though? Yes. Ask, please. As far as the entry, I'm sorry, hey. It's good. As, as far as the um, most northern part, would there be an entry coming off 21st Street? Because I was looking, it kind of went kind of fast. The proposed entry is on the south side, which is... But not the north side. Not the north side, no. We respected the residential areas to the north, 
And honestly, the street to the south is in better condition. So. Oh, he just. <laughs> <laughs> Our county administrator is going to help us change that. We're going to <laughs> drive around tomorrow. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. Not seeing anyone else on the board. I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Staffing closing comments. Anything to add, sir? No? All right. How about applicant rebuttal? Anything? No, thank you. All right. All right, commissioners, now is the time. What is the... Uh, I, I can see where we're going here. Commissioner Bellamy? <laughs> I make a um, motion to, 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 I, I want to make a motion for the approval. Second. Recommend the approval motion. <laughs> we're a little giddy. Today's our last uh, meeting until after recess, so please forgive us today. All right, we have a motion uh, to approve by Commissioner Bellamy, a second by Commissioner Servia. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, it's approved unanimously. At this time, before we go to the next item, we're going to take a 10-minute recess.
three, four. We got four. All right, we are back. Thank you. Rosina, would you like to read number seven into the record, please? Yes, item number seven, PDC 2022P, Casto Ellington, North River Village Restaurant, Casto North River Second LLC, PLN 2011-0049. It's a quasi-judicial case for a preliminary site plan for a 2,325 square foot restaurant with right through, along with associated parking and infrastructure on more or less one acre site located east of I-75 along US 301 North in the North River Village Shopping Center and commonly known at 6020 US 301 North Ellington. The case manager is Ms. Jamie Elbert and represented the applicant is Ms. Katie Lavar. All right. Commissioners, has there been any ex parte communication? Nope. All right. Not seeing anyone. All right. We are missing Reggie. Oh. Um, we'll just go ahead and move forward. Um, all right. Katie, go ahead. Good Thank morning, you. Commissioners. I'm Katie Labar with Stantec, representing Casto Net Lease Properties. I have with me today Mr. Dan Moyer, Vice President of Development with Casto, as well as Mr. Edward McDonald, the Engineer of Record with Thomas Engineering Group. And I have been sworn for the record. That was a mouthful. <laughs> The application before you today is a new preliminary site plan for approximately 2,300 square foot drive through restaurant on an out parcel of the North River Village uh, Shopping Center in Ellington. The aerial images that you see on your screen show the location of the out parcel just east of 60th Avenue East along the frontage of US 301, um, east of uh, Chili's and west of the SunTrust Bank. Just to give a little bit, a very brief historical perspective of the site and try to explain why we are here before you today, the North River Shopping Center was approved as a planned commercial development in June of 1987. Uh, this out parcel was added to that project in uh, March of 1988. The most recent development of the site was a checkers drive through restaurant and that building was demolished in 2018. So all prior approvals have expired. Because this site is zoned PDC, Planned Development Commercial, we must come before you with a new preliminary site plan before we can proceed with any redevelopment on this site. The future land use category of the site is Retail Office Residential, or ROR. And as I just said, the zoning is Planned Development Commercial. Um, this graphic represents uh, the preliminary site plan that is included in, your in the application packet. Again, it gives the specific site details of the site, um, 2,300 square feet, 0 0.05 floor area ratio, approximately 31 parking spaces. Um, and uh, it's important to note that the landscape buffers that are proposed do meet or exceed the re minimum requirements of the land development code. We have one request for specific approval. There was one criterion of the entranceway standards that um, when we were uh, doing the site layout uh, had a few dimensional challenges. And so we're, present, we're bringing that before you because we can seek specific approval through this uh, development review process. Uh, and one of the reasons why perhaps this is a concern, you know, locating the, the dumpster on the site is because when... <clears throat> When the site was originally approved, um, entranceway criteria were not in the land development code. Those criteria actually came into effect in uh, October of 1990. And so we're seeking to uh, reduce the setback of the dumpster enclosure from 20 feet to 10 feet um, so that we may locate the dumpster in the north northwest corner of the site, uh, pushing it as far away from US 301, uh, further minimizing visibility of that um, enclosure, and I think it's also important to note that we will meet all other requirements of the Land Development Code as it relates to screening that dumpster. Um, that staff supports that request. That concludes my presentation. Um, the request that you have before you does meet all of the minimum requirements of the Comprehensive Plan and Land Development Code, and I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Commissioners, are there any questions for the applicant? 
Not seeing any. Katie? Uh, staff presentation. Commissioners, uh, I would like to introduce Jamie Elbert. She is uh, the, a new planner with us. She was working previously with the environmental planning and right now is with the public hearing and administrative review section. It's a pleasure for us to be with her. All right, congratulations, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to have you. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> 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 a really tough one. <laughs> So Jamie Elbert, uh, planner with the county, um, I have been sworn. Um, I do have a presentation prepared, um, but I do agree with all the facts presented by the applicant's agent. Um, I'm here for questions or can proceed with the presentation if you desire. What is the pleasure of the board? Um, I th I'm good without it. I just uh, got questions about, um, well, mainly about the oh, entrance in. Hold, so. hold on one second. Oh, yeah. So. Um, Madam Attorney, is that okay not to, since this is quasi? How do you? Yes, as long as is it the opinion of the planner that the project can be found consistent with the council plan and in compliance with the LDC? That's correct. Okay, that's we'll see. All right. Okay. Commissioner now, Whitmore. Yeah, I'd like to ask. Um, I I know the entrance way into all that to go to the outlet and everything has been a um, concern for years um, with uh, on the on that side of the property with the the traffic. So mainly it's Clark. Um, are we okay? I mean, I know this was approved before any of us, but is Clark here or somebody from transportation? Um, I just want to make sure, did that ever get resolved with um, the owner of the shopping center? And I remember we were trying to get right away to widen up there for ages. Well, we're, we're still working on project for 60th Avenue East proper. Uh -huh. Uh, there was a time when we were looking at working with the developer to see if we could build, I guess what you could call a bypass road or alternate path around the shopping center that would help take some of the traffic out of the intersection. It doesn't look like that's going to uh, be able to go forward. So the 60th Avenue East project is under design, and after that we'll proceed into acquisition and on to construction. So we're still some time away, but it is in process. And since this is an infill, do you have any issues with this project? Fresh cars uh, we with we typically don't have problems with these kinds of projects because they were kind of thought of as a one big shopping center originally, and you're just taking one thing out and putting another one in, even though it's been a little while since okay. Checkers was there. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm not seeing any other commissioners here on the board, so I'm going to open this to public comment. Is there anyone that would like to come forward on this item? Not seeing anyone. I'm going to close public comment. Um, do we have any st uh, closing statements from staff? No, no, at right. this time. Thank you. About the applicant? All right, we're on a roll. Deliberations, commissioners. What's the pleasure of the board? So. Motion to approve the recommended uh, project. Thanks. For approval. All right, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Cruz. I'm sorry, Commissioner Servi with a second by Cruz. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? It is approved, Madam Clerk, unanimously. Commissioner Satcher, did you have something to add, sir? Uh, I was just going to say, so I understand this to be the future plan to be for a Chipotle. And uh, so I just wanted to say that to people watching at home um, in District 1 that you got a Chipotle coming. Chipotle. And then I wanted to speak to whoever might be listening. Chipotle slash, or sorry, Casto yeah. and, uh, and Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, if you're watching, <laughs> you need to come to District 1. Oh. <laughs> 64 and 75 or 301 and 75 or... What is our, our new road? Erie Road and 301, God. Fort Hammer Parkway. We are, we are talking major success. The, the Cathy's will love it. Andrew, Ross, guys, Chick-fil-A, Manatee County, we love you. It is now the time to mention that District 1 is getting a Chick-fil-A. It was on the CIP yesterday. You must have missed it. Um, no. Is there... Any doubt that this board needs to go on recess? I'm just saying. All right. Commissioner Sasher, I know that I think there was a pre-application meeting or a case 
already for a, a <laughs> chicken fillet, but I don't know where. I can I can figure out, but I don't know where. I have to figure out because with the amount of application, I don't remember everything. But I can figure out if there is something in place around. I know about 50 million people would be very <laughs> interested in that information. Thank you. Wow. My district never gets, I mean, we're so quiet there. It's, I, uh, anyway, all right, so we're going to go ahead and move forward. Item number eight, Rosina. Item number eight is PDMU 1916 CG Rye Ranch LLC, Rye Ranch LLC owner, PLN. 1909-0066 is a quasi-judicial case to rezone more or less 1,368 acres from A, North Central Overlay, General Agricultural North Central Overlay, to the PDMU MCO, Plan Development Mixed Use, retaining the North Central Overlay District, generally located along the south south of Rutland Road, Coney Road 675 and east of Rye Road in Parish, approving a general development plan large project for 3,500 residential units, single family detached, single family semi detached, single family attached, and multifamily, up to 3,000 square feet of commercial space and up to 20,000 square feet for public use facility and approving a schedule of uses of prohibited and permitted uses as voluntarily proffered by the applicant and attached as exhibit B of the ordinance. The case manager is Mr. Marshall Robinson and he represented the applicant is Ms. Rachel Layton and Mr. Scott Rudasil. All right, commissioners, has there been any ex parte communication? All right, not seeing any. Scott is back. Uh, good morning again, commissioners. For the record, my name is Scott Rudisell. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Rye Ranch, LLC. I'll start by introducing our, our project team here. Uh, we have John Faulkner and Steve Servan here representing Rye Ranch, LLC. Uh, we have Rachel Layton, who's an AICP planner with ZNS. Uh, we also have Nathan Crott, the civil engineer with ZNS. Uh, Steve Henry is our traffic engineer on the project with Lynx and Associates and Joel Christian, uh, our environmental consultant with Ardura. So the, uh, the request before you is a large mixed-use project application, uh, master-planned community with a rezone to PDMU with GDP approval for 3,500 residential units of varying types, 300,000 square feet of commercial uses and 20,000 square feet of public facility use on almost 1,400 acres. Uh, this is a large mixed use master plan community. Um, and as we've seen with other projects of this type, there are a lot of benefits to these types of developments. For one, you get a, uh, you get a mix of housing types and an integration of uses within the project. So, you know, we have these areas that develop <coughs> residentially first, and then we come in and have painful commercial rezone hearings uh, after the fact. Um, so this type of project helps to, to eliminate that. Everything is, everything is planned up front so people know um, coming in um, how the project will be developed. Another major benefit is uh, infrastructure planning, because you get better planning with a project of this size. Uh, the applicant's been working with your staff actually for, for years now on the infrastructure planning for this project. There's going to be a significant investment in water and sewer infrastructure to bring those through the project. Uh, they've included public facility uses. You saw that on the schedule of uses, and that's planned for Parish Fire Station number two uh, within the boundaries of the project. Uh, project also has existing and planned thoroughfares running down both sides and through the middle. You can see on the, on the GDP there. There's going to be huge amounts of right-of-way dedicated for new roadways and the expansion of existing roadways through and in the area of this project. Uh, de the developer will also be constructing the roadways through the project uh, at a significant savings to the county in addition to the uh, required concurrency improvements. 
There's an LDA in process to ensure that the facilities are in place in time to serve the needs of the project. And as part of that draft LDA, uh, the applicant is proposing improvements to Rye Road uh, with details still being worked out and that will, that will come back before you. Um, another benefit with a large master planned project like this is that you're able to provide large areas for preservation and open space. This project has nearly 100 acres of wetlands um, with only minor impacts for road crossings. Uh, the project will provide a minimum of 123 acres of native vegetation and cumulatively the project will provide for more than 380 acres of open space through preservation and, create, and creation. Uh, that is a huge number and allows for uh, real meaningful open space like parks and recreational areas and trails throughout, throughout the project. Um, in addition this, to the open space, there's going to be unified design themes and landscaping and focal points to the project. Um, yeah. This project has been designed over the course of several years um, as part of a comprehensive proposal to allow for the best version of this project. We are happy to present it to you. And with that, I will turn it over to Rachel. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Oh, no. I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be as fast as I can, though. No, I don't want you to rush. No, it's we were a, just a having a project. little situation here. Okay, sorry about that. You're good. Um, <laughs> you're good. I'm Rachel Layton. Look, Scott had more than me today. Um, I am a certified planner with ZNS Engineering, and I have been sworn. Um, as Scott mentioned, we're seeking a rezoning to plan development mixed use with a general <laughs> development plan, and this is a large master plan community, so this came in as a large project application, which requires additional scrutiny by the staff. The vision for this project is a walkable work, live, and play community. The property itself is located on 1,368.54 acres of land on the south side of Rutland Road and the east side of Rye Road, extending south all the way down Rye Road, approximately a half mile north of Upper Manatee River Road. The property has been actively used for agricultural purposes. There are wetlands on the property and the property is suitable for development. So you see uh, with the future land use map we have um, UF3, and then we have a hard line, and then we have AGR to our west. Um, we are within the UF3 future land use category, and um, we are within the future development area boundary. The UF3 future land use category allows residential and support uses with a maximum gross density of three dwelling units per acre and a floor area of 0.5 at activity nodes. The comprehensive plan does limit non-residential development to 300,000 square feet in the UF3. Comprehensive plan objectives, goals, and policies encourage a variety of housing stock in both the future land use and the housing elements. The housing element of the comprehensive plan contains policies that permit a variety of appropriate dwelling unit types and sizes in all residential future land use categories. Future land use elements provide requirements for strong communities, which the general development plan does incorporate. The comprehensive plan provides policies for commercial locational criteria, which promote the development of commercial uses at activity nodes or the intersection of two thoroughfare roads. The comprehensive plan provides for a range of commercial uses and intensity to provide for a scale of commercial development, generally consistent with the surrounding character of the area. The UF3 category allows for activity nodes with neighborhood and community servicing commercial uses. So one of the things I think Marshall just passed out was the updated use table, and that has a note that all uses will have to be in compliance with the UF3 future land use category. The proposed zoning request will amend the map to plan development mixed use, retaining the North Central Overlay District. Plan development commercial, mixed use, and residential developments have been approved and developed in the area surrounding the property, changing the character of this area. The request is consistent with the Manatee County Comprehensive Plan and is a logical extension of plan development in the area. To the north is PDR and PDC. To the south is plan development residential, approved recently for Rye Crossing. To the west, we have some A1 and plan development residential. And to the east is general agriculture. 
The plan development mixed use district is intended for the establishment of complementary groupings of residential and commercial uses. The PDMU district allows the master developer to plan for future non-residential, multifamily, and single family residential uses, achieving a superior and quality development. So I did my development trends map differently this time. Um, so the, the green area is the North Central Overlay District and the blue is the concurrency layers. And then when we add concurrency layers to GDP layers, you can see we've got just a tremendous amount of development in the North Central Overlay. And that development in the area is moving west to east consistent with the comprehensive plan. And again, we've transitioned from agricultural uses and large lot residences to planned development residential with smaller lots. And this has been occurring for at least the last two decades. There are more than 10 nearby subdivisions in various stages of development. We have Foxbrook to the north. Along Gulf Course Road, we have Canoe Creek. We have Del Tierra on Rye. We have Rivers Reach, Rye Wilderness Estates, Rye Crossing, Southern Oaks, the aviary at Rutland Ranch, and Twin Rivers. All of these various residential projects have differing lot sizes within them and abut large residential lots. This is a desirable area of the county. Our general development plan proposes 3,500 residential units on the 1,368 acres for gross density of 2.56 dwelling units per acre. The project also includes 20,000 square feet of public facility use. Parish Fire District Station 2 is expected to be constructed within the project boundary. We're very excited about that. The project proposes five activity nodes encompassing up to 300 of the 1,368 acres. So the gray areas um, you see here are the activity nodes and they're in compliance with the com commercial locational criteria. The activity nodes, again, are located at the intersections of Rye and Rutland, Rye and Golf Course, Rutland and Golf Course, Rutland Road and Road LL, and Rye Road and Mulholland Road Extension. So we have several roads that are be, will be built throughout this project that are on the thoroughfare maps. The activity nodes allow higher density and commercial intensity in accordance with the comprehensive plan. Commercial development can only occur at these intersections um, where there are two thoroughfare roads, but it does not preclude single family residential development in lieu of the higher intensity and density. The proposed density and intensity are consistent with the comprehensive plan. And again, we have proffered a list of uses with the requirement that they be compliant with UF3. Single family detached, attached, semi-detached, and multifamily residential are all envisioned um, and minimum lot sizes were included in the general development type for each housing, for each housing type. The proposed general development plan is the appropriate implement implementation tool for plan development to promote policy 2.9.1.2 for a, a variety of housing in the area. This variety of housing types is the cornerstone of successful master plan communities. Um, we all want our communities to be just as successful as Lakewood Ranch, which is one of the most successful in our country. Stormwater and drainage design will be required to meet Manatee County and swift mud regulations prior to permit issuance and must show no adverse impacts to adjacent properties. The project design incorporates future right-of-way setbacks along Rye Ranch and Arterial, Rutland Road, which is six, County Road 675 and a collector road. The project design also includes 84-foot right-of-way dedications for Mulholland Road extension, Golf Course Road extension, and Road LL. So throughout the project, you, we will have all of these different roads that are thoroughfare roads, trans, trans, I'm not gonna get the word right there. <laughs> Cutting through <laughs> the property. <laughs> um, so we'll connect from Rye over to Rutland for all of these roads, with the exception of Moholland, which will follow the comprehensive plan, map 5A, and, and go to the, to the east property for future connection. Nearly 40 acres of land will be utilized for the road network in accordance with the comprehensive plan. And finally, a spine road is proposed to connect Golf Course Road and Road LL. The transportation impact analysis has been reviewed and accepted by county staff. Water and sewer lines are available for connection and the developer will extend water and sewer through the property. 
There is available capacity to support future demand of potable water and treatment of wastewater. The school report shows capacity is available within the service area. And the general development plan, as Scott mentioned, has open space of 28%, which is 381 acres. We do plan several amenity centers as the residential projects come online. Parks and a multi-use trail system are also anticipated in the project design to meet the recreational needs of the residents. The amenity centers may include clubhouses, pools, and other passive recreation. So Scott touched on this a little bit, but the site has 95.45 acres of wetlands. We did have to propose some minimal wetland acreage impacts and buffer impacts so that we could have road crossings for those thoroughfare roads and for some internal connectivity. Those impacts were minimized all the way down to just 1.15 acres. So we're really happy with the result there um, and asking for um, the ability to cross those roads through that 1.15 acres of wetland. We do anticipate the wetland and wetland buffer mitigation. We are proposing 30 foot wetland buffers to protect the wetlands. You can see we have a nice system that runs through the property from north to south. An existing native plant community preservation for the project is proposed at 1.23 acres, exceeding the code requirement. There are no historic sites eligible for listing by the State Department of Historic Resources, and no listed species were noted during the field visits. So we are proposing our typical setbacks here. Um, you see these all the time. Um, they are based on land development code. Um, we are proposing a specific approval for the front yard setback um, to 23 feet, and staff has been supportive of that request. The single family residential projects will apply these setbacks as shown, and as will commercial. And then for um, the next specific approval, in lieu of the NCO maximum building heights, we propose a maximum building height of four stories adjacent to thoroughfare roads in compliance with uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Land Development Code Section 401.5. This table outlines these setbacks which are consistent with the LDC. So um, this follows the letter of the Land Development Code, and so we're asking to use this instead of the NCO requirements, which is a formula. So my next slide, oh, and I'm going to run out of time. If I might have two more minutes to finish. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, from this chart, I included a comparison of the NDC, NCO and LDC requirements and the proposed buffers, which address specific approvals requested. The proposed buffers meet or exceed the LDC buffers and will be included in the NCO required plant material. So I know that there are a lot of specific approvals with this request and a lot of them have to do with buffers. So I wanted to prepare a chart that shows how much plant, uh, plant buffer width is required in the NCO, what the land development code requires, and what we're proposing is um, in most places meets or exceeds land development code. And in those places where we've asked for the reduction, we're actually going to put in the plant material that is required in the North Central Overlay District, with the exception of the commercial. So we'll have a, a three less of the evergreen trees, but we will put in 30 square feet of foundation buffering instead of um, those three evergreen trees for the commercial uses. And all of our specific approval requests with this application are related to the architectural design, building height, size <coughs> and massing, and accessory use structure setbacks. We've worked with staff to propose an alternative as outlined in stipulation A3. Um, and again, a lot of these have been routinely approved for other projects, especially our large projects. And as Similar requests were made by Rye Crossing, Canoe Creek, and the Aviary, which are nearby. And these are necessary to produce the best version of this project. The final site plan will comply with all LDC regulations, including stormwater design, lighting, landscaping, building setbacks, and open space. The application has received a supportive staff report and planning commission recommendation for approval. We are in agreement with the proposed stipulations. The project is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the land development code, and design includes Parish Fire Station Number 2, extension of infrastructure and thoroughfare roads, preservation of wetlands, and a list of uses that will lend to a successful master plan community. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the additional time. Oh, you're welcome, of course. <clears throat> okay, questions to the applicant? Um, Commissioner Cruz. Thank you. Yeah, I've 
kind of three questions. Uh, first, when you talked about the maximum commercial of 300,000 square feet, is there yes. a minimum that you're proposing? I mean, just we to ensure there's some sort of capture within this big area? So with the 300 acres of the activity nodes, we are maxed out with our request of 300,000 square feet. We don't know right now how that's going to come online, um, but 300,000 square feet is very similar to the size of two shopping centers. Oh, I agree. So, I, I'm fine with it. Um, My question no, no was minimum. the minimum, the no. other direction. We just had this with Artists and Lakes where they came and said, well, let me just, now that we've sold these houses, let me just yank all this commercial out of here. And now everyone has to get in their cars and drive on our roads. I'd much prefer when you're building something of over 1,000 acres that we have some sort of employment base and retail base and so forth in there. So it's yes. great that you can max out at 300, but you can theoretically min out at zero. I don't know that that I was just asking if this. you had it in there. <laughs> no, the, the traffic study that was approved shows a minimum of 175,000 oh, square feet of commercial between retail and office. All right, so there would be a minimum. So there would be something other than just endless residential. Right, that's to there. justify the, the trip capture. Perfect. Okay. Uh, second question. There's a lot of adjustments being made and requests against the North Central Overlay. Did you look into just not being part of the North Central Overlay? Well, since you opened that can of worms, <laughs> um, yes. this project, yes, the short answer is yes. We originally made application for this project in August of 2019, um, requesting that the NCO be removed as part of the rezoning application. Procedurally, that was, um, it's not something that happens very often. So um, we were asked to submit just a land development code text amendment to remove ourselves from the land from the north central overlay district because we knew that we, there was we wanted to have control of this master plan development and how it looks and feels um, not that we want it to be a minimum project but we want it to be beautiful um, and with landscaping and everything else and mr faulkner and mr servan have worked with our office at least eight years, if not more, talking about this piece of property and how we can develop it um, and the right timing. And so we feel like the timing is correct now. Um, so um, because there were some uh, challenges <coughs> with how do we get uh, this type of application to move forward, we felt it was best to just go ahead and ask for the specific approvals um, to these items that were mostly design and building height and setback and buffer related. So there are still 10 more pages of land, uh, land development criteria that we'll have to work through, um, but we've asked to not employ the point system um, specifically and the colors um, because we really are at the fringe of what I believe was intended for the North Central Overlay District. Oh, I 100% agree. That's what I was asking. <laughs> uh, my last question is about the roads, in particular Mulholland, um, but both golf course and Mulholland, was the intention that the developers are, are putting those roads in or are they being requested from us too? Do you want to take that one? No, the developer will be constructing the roads internal okay. to the project. And then Mulholland on, on the bottom, that doesn't fully connect to Rye right now. Is, is the intention, do you own the, the land to get it over to, to Rye? Because Mulholland eventually forks out and it creates two of your five nodes. And right now it creates zero of the five nodes because it doesn't fully hit this parcel. But then you fork it off to LL up north and then Mulholland Extension in the south, which doesn't seem to go anyplace. Um, but, but it does create two of the nodes. So are you prepared to, to build this? Is there like right-of-way issues? Or? Well, we don't control the off-site pieces, uh, obviously, but there is a stipulation that, that the nodes uh, won't be considered an activity node until the node itself is constructed. All right, so, so that'll, be up, that'll be on us. And part of this, uh, I apologize, just clarification, this is the first time I've seen this. So we would have to build the remainder of Mulholland to get to Rye before it hits your property to build out the, the remainder of the way? No. What's that? The, just the west side. The west side, the west side no. Right. Yeah, we're just, uh, which piece of I'm Mulholland? I'm saying Mulholland connects, according to your map, connects to Rye, and then it goes in a little, and then it forks off LL to the north, Mulholland to the south. It Correct. creates two nodes, the, the LL and, and uh, 675, as well as the Mulholland and Rye. You're saying we would get Mulholland the rest of the way to Rye before you can create that extension, right? From the west. There wouldn't be a node if you just did a straight that's that's what I'm asking. Correct. If you just well, did a road from from Rye <coughs> to 675, 
though that wouldn't create two nodes right it would still have to continue connecting all the way back to the rest of Mulholland through the neighborhood or correct no? the to to the west from from Rye uh -huh. that connection of Mulholland would not be con constructed by the applicant on this okay. project yeah all right Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you. And thank you for the excellent presentation. Great job, as always, you guys. Um, I, I think I heard you say that an LDA is forthcoming, correct? correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so because you're working on that, can you share with us the timing of these uh, major thoroughfare roadways and maybe the t what you anticipate being the first phase, where it will be? Do you know that? Uh, we don't have the timing and milestones is one of the things that that we're working on still right now um, but what is anticipated to be the the major improvement for the project is an improvement to rye road so making that into a divided uh, four-lane roadway which the applicant would construct two lanes of so that it would be ready to be widened to four Okay, and for the activity nodes, um, Rachel, can you explain how, I, I know that um, it's described in the comp plan, but just so that I'm clear, can you explain how the FAR and the density is calculated for those activity nodes? Is it project-wide or is uh, it within the that's node? That's a good question. Well, so activity nodes are a very new concept in our comprehensive plan. Um, and the way that we've been looking at them and the way that it's reflected on the general development plan is for that 300 acres, um, we could ask, potentially ask that dwelling units up to nine and it, per acre be applied for those, but it comes out of the rest of the 3,500. So it can't be in addition to the 3,500. And so the same thing with the 0.5 FAR that's allowed by the comprehensive plan at activity nodes. We can't ask for more than the 300,000 square feet overall for the project. So what we're proposing with any of the final site plans that come forward will be a table that tracks all of our units, our square footages, our open space, um, and our preservation areas so that we make sure that we're tracking everything for this large project. Okay, great. Uh, those are my only questions for now. Thank Thanks. you. Any other questions, commissioners, for the applicant? All right, not seeing anyone. Uh, we will go ahead then and go to staff presentation. Good morning, Marshall Robinson. I'm a planner with staff. And I have a presentation prepared, but much like Jamie earlier, um, I'm happy to go through the presentation, but most of Rachel's presentation is, is kind of a, a redundant presentation of what I have to, to show for you. I'd be happy to answer any questions or give you the presentation. Um, Commissioners, do you need, do you want the? Anything additional that you need to add? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. Well, a couple of things that I'd like to, because some points of clarification that's came up because of this discussion, but not so much in my presentation. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I'd want to clarify is that the way we calculate density, Commissioner Servia, the activity nodes, um, they can develop multi or they can develop residential and they're up to the increased nine dwelling units per acre. But the overall project would still be the three dwelling units per acre for the UF3, even though they can get that increased density in the activity node. And that same goes for non-residential in the FAR. And like Rachel said, when they come in project by project on the final site plans, we'll draw those down from a from a table of entitlements kind of like balancing a checkbook. Um, from the 3,500 and the 300,000 square feet, we'll just draw those down individually, uh, final site plan by final site plan until they close the project out. Um, the other point of clarification I just want to make is maybe explain a little bit more about the handout that was given to you for the list of schedule of uses. Um, you know, this was a very um, unique project in its timing and where it fell on the, on the hearing schedule with with the, uh, the recess in July, so we kind of had back-to-back -back meetings. And uh, so we had to take a close look at the list of uses. And, and one thing that we wanted to make sure is we didn't lose the opportunity to check the, the uses against the UF3 range of potential uses from our comp plan, even though they had legislated some of the uses in the chart with their strikethroughs by committing not to develop those uses. But there are a remaining amount of uses in that chart that still could potentially come in for development on a final site plan. So we just wanted to tag that note in there on the, on the list of uses that gives us an opportunity to further evaluate those uses as they come in against the range of potential uses in the UF3 uh, comprehensive plan category. 
Um, and then we also did stipulate the commercial roadway buffer consistent with the uh, analysis and finding and the specific approval. And those really are the, the, the points I don't think that are in my presentation. <clears throat> Commissioner Servi, anything else? Yeah. Did you want the, I think the attorney no. wants to speak. Oh, I just what wanted it? to make sure before Marshall left the podium there. In your opinion, can this project be found and consistent with the council plan and compliance with land area code with the exception of those specific approvals? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That was going to be one of my questions. Yeah, thank go you. Ahead. Um, so I, I always like this exhibit B because I think it provides a lot of clarity, especially <coughs> to the staff. When an application comes in, it's very clear what's allowed and what's not allowed. But there is a caveat with this one that it has to be reviewed per the UF3 future land use category. And so I guess what that does, correct me if I'm wrong, is as the UF3 category um, transforms and changes, so will this list of uses. So it's not locking in any uses today in that regard. You're absolutely right. Okay. Yes. Um, um, and I wanted to ask you about the specific approvals. And I, uh, just as an editorial note, I do look forward to the NCO being changed or revised so we don't have to keep going through these. I know you guys are working on that. Um, in your opinion, do the specific approval requests meet the land development code? Uh, have they made a good argument for finding? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the justification statements that we analyzed for each one of them were, were very acceptable. Um, we understood that there were some, some you know, as, as Rachel said, the character has changed from that what was once envisioned for the North Central Overlay District, which was most separation distance from your roadways and enhanced buffering and screening and the architectural stuff. And, uh, and in the staff report, um, I think it might be in the staff report or it might be in the presentation, there is a slide that's pretty telling about the change of that character. <coughs> and so what we did was is we took a look at what they were requesting in terms of relief from those requirements and checked them against what historically we've done in the past. Um, I think you might recall uh, Havel Farms and IE Manatee are our two staple projects, large project applications that are found in the UF3 future land use category. And so we wanted to make sure that we were at least at a minimum consistent with what we did on those projects with the Rye Ranch project. And so when we did a comparison and looked at, at what relief they, they sought after and what relief this project sought after, they were very common. And, and the justification and findings for the reasons of relief needed were pretty much the same. Um, so that's the architectural stuff, and then that's the big, the big buffers on the roadway. And if you take a look at the development pattern over the course of time since 2005 when the NCO was first created, you can see projects that either have approved, pending, or closed concurrency within the, within the NCO. And it's a very telling story about the amount of development has just passed through the NCO and put those implementations early on. And here we are on the back half of the life of the NCO, and we see that the intent and purpose mostly for those things that were required in that overlay district have been met. And so you see these projects coming in today and they're using development standards that match a lot of the planned developments that we've historically approved, whether it's lot widths, lot size, building heights, setbacks, things of this nature. And so really the NCO seems to be not very feasible to, to be able to meet all those requirements in this day and age. Yes, agreed. Um, can you tell me, did you hold a neighborhood meeting or did the applicant hold a neighborhood meeting? No neighborhood meeting, okay. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Um, can I um, enter a comment, Misty? Um, we, we were on a license in the North Central Overlay and when we have projects in the North Central Overlay with a um, large project like this and we try to apply all the regulation there is in the North Central overlay is almost impossible to follow together all these regulations. And for this reason, many of the projects that we receive with, with the MCO has a bunch of specific approvals. The follow all the regulations with the sick bags in combination with the styles, colors, seven point design for the buildings. When you get the project and you try to put together elevations with all of this, believe me that an architect is <laughs> gonna be in trouble to follow all, all these regulations. And for this reason, we have this amount of uh, specific approvals general with the North Central Overlay. Also with the buffers for um, 
commercial buffers, usually we have the specific approval to reduce the buffer because the argument is that the commercial size has to be visible from the road, no height, and they include opacity. I mean, uh, the, the commercial side going to be no seen by the road, and it's difficult to follow uh, a successful business. I, I understand completely. Yes. Thank you. Going there next. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open this to public comment. I do have two cards. Uh, the first one is Richard Ziegler, and the second is Mike Bryant. If you come up, state your name, you'll have three minutes, sir. Good morning. Yeah, I'm Richard Ziegler. I'm a resident on the uh, Rye Road, North Rye Road area. When I bought in 1996 and built my home, I uh, worked 37 have years. Have you been sworn? Oh, I have been sworn. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I built the home in 1996. We were required to have five acres to build our home so that we could have a, a country atmosphere. Uh, knowing that, we, we knew that the property across the street from us, even though a farmer had once told me that land is, uh, doesn't get built anymore, so he's not going to do anything but farm, uh, that... Wow property that borders us, we're asking that it be uh, no commercial. I don't want to, you know, you build a dream home and you live there for 20 years, 25 years, and you walk out your front door and it's designed for all commercial use on North Rye Road. That that should be residential. Uh, I know that the, the five-acre setback that we had to have to, to build on, uh, you know, we'd be happy with, with maybe like with... Uh, Foxbrook that had two and a half acres, but at least let us look at other residents, not not activity all day and sometimes all night. If, if you get a convenience store, you're going to have 24-hour traffic. Uh, we want to have the peace that we've had for 25 years and expect that uh, the, the development would, would, would cooperate. Uh, we did not have any meeting that she had asked for with the residents so that we could voice our opinions or or uh, maybe understand what they were trying to do. Uh, I'm just asking that you uh, uh, keep it like we have it as a residential area. None of the five projects in the area I know of, the people that have multiple acres, do not see a commercial building anywhere from their front door. So uh, this is unusual to, to, to put the commercial right across the street from where we were required to have five acres to build a home. I thank you. Thank you, sir. Mike Bryant. Good morning. My name is Mike Bryant, and my wife and I own Have property. you been sworn, sir? Oh, yes, I have. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, my wife and I own property adjacent to the proposed uh, Rye Ranch development. And what I have is just a pet signed petition by um, some of the property owners at Rye Acres that I would like to read at this time. And it says, we residents of Rye Acres Parish, Florida, wish to object and strongly recommend some alternatives and changes in the planning of the proposed development attached called Rye Ranch. We moved to the east area of Parish for the reasons to be in an area wide of open space, calm and quiet. We did not envision having commercial development right next door to our homes in which we treasure. We do not object to development of the area as we know that it's surely coming. This is a wonderful area to live in. What we have envisioned is development that would synchronize with the area. For example, in this area of Parish and Rye Road, almost all of the homes are at least one acre in size and many of them larger. For example, Foxbrook at the corner of Rye Road and Route 675 as well as all the homes in Rye Acres along North Rye Road are one acre in size. Unfortunately, in this plan, we see that five activity nodes are depicted and proposed in the area designated for development. However, it appears that activity node three abuts the rear of all of the homes in the already existing Rye Acres development. We strongly suggest that this node be relocated to another section of the potential development area or be eliminated altogether which would be most suitable. 
Um, this area of Wright Acres and the surrounding area is currently all single family residential homes and should remain so to retain the current living environment. There are also other homes on Rye Road in the same area that are more than one acre. Should commercial or multifamily units of any kind be developed in activity node three, this will not only cause traffic, but also noise and light pollution, as well as other negative effects and disturbances. We also do not wish to have commercial or multifamily development units looking right down at us and the disrupting the privacy, privacy of our backyards at a height of three or four levels above us. I doubt you would wish to have the same happen right in your backyard. Please consider a more suitable redesign for this area designated as Activity Node 3, which is part of the most 1,400 acres of Rye Ranch parcel under consideration. We wish to retain our property values and the enjoyment of our current homes without noise, light, and other disturbances right behind us. This area should remain residential to keep the area's design as it already exists. A most suitable and more synchronized use of the proposed development project would be more single family homes. Go ahead, finish up, please. Thank you. Uh, single family homes matching the design of the already existing area here on North Rye Road, i.e. single family homes on one acre or more, or at least residential with large lots, no commercial, or multifamily development of any type or construction with multi-levels in this area or activity node. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to come forward? Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm Denise Greer, and I have not been sworn. I apologize. Is there anyone else who would speak before the board? Do you swear or affirm that the factual statements and representations you're about to make to the board are truthful and accurate? I do. When you come to the podium, please state your name and if you've been sworn. I'm Denise Greer, and I have been sworn. <laughs> I live at 16702 Golf Course Road. Um, I do have to say before my time starts, hopefully, um, I'm actually on vacation to be here. I'm a county employee, but I am on vacation. Um, I've had no contact with anybody on the board, and um, I have not been involved in this rezone PLN 1908-0066. So first of all, I'm in favor of the project. Um, I'm not in favor of all the um, specific approvals, but I am in favor of the project. Um, I do think it's going to increase the value of my property. But I felt compelled to come here today because Parrish doesn't have a stewardship district like Lakewood Ranch does to make sure that development is moves forward in a means that's compatible with surrounding um, residents. So. I'm not sure if you know, but there are 30 five-acre-plus residents along Rye Road, right in this area. If you count them up, there's actually 30 people who own five acres or more adjacent to Rye Road. And then you've got the smaller ones that have come before you and um, mentioned their properties. So the specific approvals that I am specifically against are three, five, six, and seven. I completely understand health, safety, welfare around the commercial districts. I understand and agree that the North Central overlay needs to be revamped, but I think at the edge of the urban service area and adjacent to residential is where it is um, compatible. Um, as far as the 50 feet being reduced down to 30, I've got some pictures for you here. Um, it may be the same plant material, but there's 20 feet of green growth that won't be there. Um, this is a 50 foot buffer with a berm and it was installed around uh, 2015. It looks great. It was done by one of our developers that goes above and beyond uh, buffers and that's actually on Chin Road. Um, this is a 25 foot buffer without a berm and it was installed in approximately uh, 2005 and you can see it's less dense here's a 15 foot buffer with a 35 foot ag setback again a lot less dense so I'd request that you not reduce the 50 foot buffer adjacent to residential 
Um, I don't think that we need a big box this far out. Lakewood Ranch doesn't even have a single use tenant greater than 75,000 square feet. I believe between Lakewood Ranch 64 and University Parkway. Um, so I don't think we need that. I mean, Publix will fit well under that. Um, you can have about 30 more seconds. Okay, thank you. I would like to mention that we do have localized flooding out here. Um, and I would hope that they will have to utilize the new Gamble Creek watershed plan that will be in effect, I think, in August. Um, and that's, I, I, like I said, I am in favor. I just don't like to see the buffers reduced adjacent to residential. Thank you. Anyone else from the public want to speak? Good morning, Madam Chair. I would request as uh, and uh, Glenn Jablina for the record, and I've been sworn uh, that I request uh, up to 10 minutes as I am vice chair of AHAB and spokesman for the Affordable Housing Board. That document is signed and in this building for the record. Uh, Glenn, you know that we have to have it when at this meeting. It's in I cannot take just because you say it's on file. That is not our procedure. It's not our policy. Oh, George, you can't. So I'm can't sorry. I cannot abide by that. We can, uh, and okay. I'll make so, that decision. All right. So, again, we, 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 we go through that snake hole of let's not go for the density bonus. Let's go for the rezone. Again, you're leaving money uh, out on the table. You should do a moratorium on the rezone and have them come back. Misty, it's unconscionable. They did not have a citizens meeting. These folks have to come here to defend their rights, and they didn't have a town hall meeting. This should be tabled right off the get-go. That should be part of the process even to come up here to do the plan. How many town hall meetings did you? Did you engage your community? They didn't even walk across the street and talk to the neighbors. What kind, what kind, what kind of feedback is this? We're all about public comment, and they don't have anything in that direction. Back in February, I gave you best practices of what you can do about this. You know, I hear about, oh, a variety of housing. I don't hear about, I don't hear about a variety of prices. I just have a variety of housing. I hear about the, the fire, fire building they're going to put up, but I don't hear about, hey, that entry-level fire, fireman that's going to man that and protect these 3,500 houses, do you think he could afford to live out there? No, go back to the hood because that's all you can afford. I don't hear that from the developer. Oh, we want you to stay there. 300,000 square feet? Who do you think is going to work there? Entry-level. There might be a few small business owners, but they're going to have employees, $10, $15 range. Do you think they could afford to live in this 3,500 community? Absolutely not. You know, I had said before that there should be an impact fee on all new development. I still stand by that. Lousy 50 cents a square foot. Do you think that's going to make a difference in a two or three, four hundred thousand dollar house? They do change orders for, 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 for fixtures, for faucets more than that. Commercial, they're the worst. They bring in dozens of low entry paid jobs, entry level, 10, 15 bucks an hour. They are the worst. They would gladly pay that impact fee if it was initiated. But you don't do that. Again, let's, let's, let's take in, let's, let's take in the, developer had on and just, hey, we'll go for a rezone. Let's not put the moral compass on and say, this is, we're going to call this what it is. It's a density bonus. You should table this. You should, you should, re you, you should refuse the rezone and come back to the table after you have talked to the citizens and then come back and we'll talk about the density bonus. Because right now, that's the way they get around that. It's a loophole that needs to be closed. So, um, again, I could, I could go on and on and on, but you know how I feel about it. One more minute, Glenn. 
and you made me late because I got to go to Tiger Bay and ask about Tommy and Will about the Sadowski funds. Where are they going to make up the difference? They're not going to be happy to see me. Anyways, big on citizen comments. They've done zero in that direction. Zero. These folks got to drive in and address their concerns instead of them stepping up to the plate and saying, you know what, we heard from a half a dozen, we should be an acre, we should be five acres. You'll never hear that spew out of their mouths. They don't want you to know that. This needs to be tabled. Thank you. Anyone else want to come forward for public comment? All right. Well, don't see anyone else. All right, we'll go to uh, Board of County Commissioners questions to applicant staff or citizens. Commissioner Servia. Yes, thank you very much. I have a question beginning um, with Tom Gersenberger, please, for staff. And my question is um, the flooding issue that was brought up, the localized flooding. Uh, will this project be uh, held to the Gamble Creek watershed standards? Good morning, Madam Chair and fellow commissioners uh, and uh, county administrator. For the record, Thomas Kersenberger, Public Works Department, have been sworn. Uh, Commissioner Servia, to answer your question, is uh, yes. There is a portion of this particular project which does lie within the Gimble Creek Watershed Management Plan area. Um, it, the project area that is incorporated within that watershed is required to reduce level rate of uh, discharge by 50% and also to address uh, floodplain mitigation uh, pursuant to floodplain delineation from the Gamble Creek watershed. Okay, yeah, I appreciate that, thank you. Um, I have a question for Rosina, I guess, or the planner, whoever wants to address it. Um, does our comprehensive plan or our land development code have a requirement that a certain amount of affordable housing be provided for development like this? No, it's not mandatory. There is no provision for that. And also, I would like to clarify a comment from one of the citizens that talk about density bonus. This project is not a, apply for any density bonus. In the activity notes, it's possible to reach nine dwelling units per acre, but the overall density is taken with the entire property. They can have nine dwelling units per acre in these activity notes, but they cannot exceed in overall 320 units per acre that is allowed in US 3. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. And uh, I too agree that um, I understand Mr. Jabalina's passion for what he's trying to accomplish, but they, the applicant in this case and in previous cases is not asking for a density bonus, which is a defined term, and that's why it's important that we talk about what's really accurate here. There's no density bonus that has been applied for. Uh, Commissioner Serbia, and I would like to clarify that with the activity notes that are proposed, actually only activity notes one has entitlements to build commercial development because it's at the intersection of two existing roads. The other activity nodes gonna be in place when the roads are constructed. Understood. Okay. Okay, okay. and there was a, a citizen who came up, uh, Miss Greer, and she said she was not in favor of three specific approval requests, but she said them so quickly, I don't know which one she's talking about. Could the planner please go through those three and explain why you feel your recommendation is as it is? Thank you for the, thank you for the question, Commissioner. Um, well, when we looked at these, we obviously we consulted with our environmental review section, who is uh, their scope of review are for the buffers and, and the separation distances. Yes. Yeah. Is it and not on? <laughs> And please state your name, too, uh, please. Marshall, Marshall, planner with staff. And um, they even even with the specific approval in the NCO, it still meets the LDC requirements. There's nothing being proposed, no alternatives or any anything uh, that's being proposed that would be less than what's required um, in the land development code with a small caveat of three trees uh, that are being replaced in lieu of some uh, additional found, uh, landscape foundation landscaping for commercial. 
So there is really the, the caveat of where we may not be exactly what the LDC requires because we're replacing the three street trees on the commercial uh, buffering with enhanced landscape and to match what we do in the entranceway. Um, but, but they meet or exceed the, the land development code even with the specific approvals. Okay, yeah, thank you. Those are my only questions. All right, Commissioner Satcher. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just speak for myself. Uh, my ideal way to live life is to be able to, you know, get on a horse out at Rye Road and go all the way to the beach. Um, <laughs> wow. Right? I can't see no, you. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Okay. Oh. I mean, that'd, be, that'd just be awesome. That's the a, that's a way to spend the day. Um, but the tr but in uh, 2021 in Manatee County, that is not an option. And uh, so what we have to do is look at what our options are. Um, you know, this is a three house per acre uh, proposal. Ooh. They're, from what I understand, donating land for a firehouse. Um, at least, I mean, the fire, I know that the, the fire departments have been looking for land. So even if they're selling it at something reasonable, the fact that they're able to find it there, um, you know, is, uh, is a valuable move. Uh, I lived off Rye Road, and I objected pretty strenuously when we approved something at the south side of Rye Road in 64 because I drove that route, and I knew that that was a spot as you come in off 64, people come in fast. Um, and to have more people backing up and turning wasn't a good idea. Um, I was against uh, adding more apartments at the bend in Erie Road um, because it was not a good idea and was not safe. Uh, when I look at a, a development like this, the only thing my, uh, you know, if I just could have anything I wished, I think, well, I know it's way out there and there's not very many, you know, not that much development yet, but I sure do wish it was four laned and this developer is even proposing to four lane the road. Um, so I don't think we could, you know, ask for anything better in this uh, circumstance. So because of that, I move to approve the recommended. We're, you're way ahead of us here. Do you have any questions? The chair. Yeah, we're questions. Look, maybe we're at number eight. Do you have any questions? We're almost there. Re-say re that in the form of a question. Do you yes. like riding horses to the beach? Something I'm covering. What is? <laughs> you feel like you've done, you know, it would be nice if everything stayed the same. Um, go back 25 years or 50 years in this county. But the way things are now, do you feel like you've done a pretty good job of saying with this land that we have, we're trying to make good use of it and provide a product that helps people, gives them a place to live in a wonderful area? <clears throat> I'm moving forward. <laughs> I was trying to you almost did. I'm coming back to you in just a second. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Uh, staff closing comments, anything you want to add, Marshall? Uh, no, ma'am. All right, applicant rebuttal, anything, Scott? Okay, guess what, James? Can we Mr. get that on the record? Oh, Mr. wait, Commissioner Can Mr. Wilson Sir, state he has no rebuttal on the record? I did that. He Lord, said none. The sheet of paper. We don't have any comments, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. All right. So, Commissioner Satcher or Commissioner Servia, did you have something to add before we? Yeah, this is um, th this is the part of our hearing that ca is called um, deliberations, right? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure it's in the right spot. Oh, you, well, you know you are. <laughs> okay. All right. So I just have a couple of comments because um, I I appreciate the people coming out to speak, I truly do. And I agree that our staff should require neighborhood meetings for, for rezone projects. I just, I think that's something that we do need to do because engaging the public is important. It's not currently a requirement, so no one's done anything wrong. Um, you know, I, I love the way that our conference of plan uh, writes about strong communities because it lays out what is needed to create a special sense of place and a community that's sustainable and functions well together. And when I look at this project, this project is a strong community. You know, Florida's population is surging right now, if you all didn't know that. And we are in a period of time where our population is expected to double. 
in the next uh, couple decades. So f Florida is growing crazy, and Manatee County is as well. And it is our job to plan for that growth. And I think this is the appropriate time for this project. I think it's the appropriate place for this project, and I will be supporting it. Not seeing any other commissioners on the board. Commissioner Satcher, what's the pleasure of the board? I move to approve Manatee County Zoning Ordinance number PDMU 19-16ZG. Second. And Madam Chair, I can just clarify, as reflected in the update memo, because they fine-tuned the motion, the update memo for approval. Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. There you go. Right. Yeah, second degree. So we have, we have a motion by Commissioner Satcher, the revised motion, a second by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Madam Clerk, it is approved unanimously. Thank you. All right, Commissioners, we are going to recess here for lunch in just a moment, but we'll be back at 1.30 for Commissioner comments. We do have a few things to go over. Um, we don't have time now. I we don't have time, trust me, to go through them. Um, well, if, I mean, if it's the only thing to return for, um, we could just go home after. I mean, if it takes an hour. It won't take long at all, but it's going to take a Wait, little. You just said we can't do it now, but it won't take long at all? I don't think it, it's probably going to take, I would think, 45 minutes. You think I'm the only one with a commission? Anybody have any? Let's ask that. Minor brief. Misty, you always. I do not. I do not have any commissioner comments today. All right, we might get through this then, Commissioner Whitmore. You're the other one. You have any commissioner comments? No, no. No. no go down what? The row. I, I, I'll tell you if I have any. I don't know yet. I have some written down. I may bring them up. I may not. I, I don't mind starting. All right, go ahead, Kevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Thank you all very much. Thank you. Welcome. Um, last week, I, uh, I've been doing shadow days where I go out with county employees and shadow them for the day. And last week, I was with the survey crew, and they were kind enough to schedule a job in District 3. So we went out and we surveyed the boundary between Sug Middle School and GT Bray. Uh, there's some construction going on there at Sug, and there's some of the parks guys said, you know, seems like you're constructing over on our side. So. So we sent the survey crew out there, and they were by like five feet. So it's a good thing that we did. But I, I really enjoyed my time with those guys. Um, very proud profession. It, and uh, I was told it was the second oldest profession uh, in the world. Um, in the I didn't world? have to Google the oldest. I, wow. you know, but, but yeah, and literally everything that you see everywhere you go has been surveyed, right? Road, your house, whatever it is. I mean, I'm looking at the planner as I'm saying this, but uh, at any rate, it was it was really interesting. I learned a lot about the history of surveying, and um, you know, it was interesting how what a proud profession it really was. And those guys worked really hard for us. Extremely knowledgeable people. Um, so we're in good hands with our survey crew, I would say. Um, and then also, I went out with a man named Rusty Chinnis from from Waterkeepers, and we rode all over the bay. Uh, he and I were out there for several hours. Uh, and we rode all over the bay, and, and we saw quite a bit of algae. Uh, some of it, quite a bit of it still attached to seagrass. Some of it had floated to the surface. Some of it had washed ashore uh, and was rotting. And, you know, when you see pictures of it uh, on TV or in the newspaper, it's, it's too bad there's not a scratch and sniff uh, application to that because the odor is really, really strong and really pungent. Um, I'm not stating this board needs to do anything about it or casting any blame. I'm just uh, sort of telling you that I went out there and rode around all over the bay, and it's in pretty poor shape. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, it, it just creates discoloration in the water and that sort of thing. So anyway, I rode around the bay, and uh, my report back to you is that uh, right now, and this happens seasonally, but this year we're having a pretty bad spell outbreak of algae, and right now the bay is not in great shape. Um, and for now, that is all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Bellamy, any commissioner comments? Yeah, it'd be, just to be brief, um, yesterday, yesterday um, the Senate unanimously passed a bill to establish um, Juneteenth, a, um, a, a federal holiday, and I'm sure some more work on that as far as June 19th, 1865 is when they had the, the end of you know, slavery brought up. I do want to bring it to the board's um, attention that this weekend there's an entity um, who has been 
uh, celebrating Juneteenth. Um, for the last four or five years, the Roslyn Walton Education and Enrichment Services, um, they will be having a Juneteenth celebration this weekend um, in, in Braden at, um, at Ward Temple AME Church, and the address is, um, I don't know the address, but yes, I do, 1017 Fifth Street West in um, Bradenton, Florida. Um, I was a part of the initial one that started. We started, obviously, at the... Um, at the Palmetto Youth Center, it's an exciting time. Um, there's going to be a festival on the 19th and a, a Father's Day service on the um, on, on the 20th. So that's an exciting opportunity for our community as we continue to um, move past some of these challenging things that have taken place in our history. Um, that's it for me for right now. Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I actually had two things, one of which was the red light camera, which we kind of already discussed. The second thing, uh, I also, uh, on a separate day, in a separate boat, also went out with uh, with Rusty Chinnis. <laughs> <laughs> so to clarify this for everybody, <laughs> it's entirely separate. Didn't even know he went out on it. Uh, and we also did a, a full tour. It was, it was a great tour. Um, there were two things I, I would like us to look into based on that, because we spent a couple hours on the water. The first one was we saw a lot of, homes especially further up north but but also out on the island uh that seemingly have been cutting down their mangroves excessively um it, it, they're supposed to be six foot limit to where you cut them down there's at least well, there's one house i got a ton of pictures that stuff's cut down to the water line I, I can't imagine that's that's legal in fact i know it's not i know sarasota i know the hard part is getting the state to come down and, and do anything about it and look at that my understanding is Sarasota actually used some of their code enforcement to kind of learn that system so they can go out as a county and, and fix that. You know, we need to protect our mangroves, need to protect our, our coastline. I'd like us to look into rectifying that and making sure people aren't taking advantage of trimming down their mangroves. Uh, the second thing is I also saw all of the algae, and, and I know people want to focus on the, the big issues. They, they want to point to Piney Point and and the phosphate put th th those are big issues i think it takes away from the fact that they're smaller things that can be done for the benefit of our water quality um w one of which is and, and i've spoken to a couple people about this is th there's certain things we ban and certain times of years we ban them i, I wouldn't mind looking into expanding that into things from a, a herbicide standpoint because that gets sprayed all over the place and there's uh you know well, how, how do you pronounce it. I wrote it down just because I knew I wouldn't remember it. The uh, glyphosate, which is in the Roundup and the herbicides. Like right now, you're seeing a lot of articles about all the manatees dying and over 50% of the manatees that, that ha are found dead have this in their system. And it also uh, additionally hits your algae and your blooms and things of that nature. I'd like to look into that. I know other places have banned it. Um, th this board uh, recently, before we got here, was kind of going the other way, and I know there was a discussion about even getting rid of the periods of time where we don't allow the spring, but I'd like us to start at least looking the other direction um, and seeing what else we could do, because it's little things. We, we can focus on how do we fix a big thing like, like Piney Point, but fixing little things helps too, and we should look at all available options of protecting our water quality and our waterways, and, and I think we should relook into whether or not we should be expanding our fertilizer ordinance to account for things that have problems. And, and maybe we, we do the, the research and it turns out we don't, but you know, I, I'd like us to look into that because you know, every little bit helps. Um, can I dialogue with them? Uh -huh. Okay. First of all, mangroves, and you mentioned the island. Um, JT used to be our code enforcement officer. He's the head of code enforcement there. Uh, they can, uh, along the shoreline, they can, um, if they get a permit, they have to get a DEP permit. Trust me, I report, when I see people trimming, uh -huh. I call code enforcement and report it. Um, you can report, uh, you can trim around um, docks. And um, you don't need a permit for that, because uh, there's a law that says you don't. And because I've reported and they said, no, we're trimming along our docks. But uh, if you're seeing that low, 
they have to get a permit, and the only way you can find out is if you, um, if somebody reports that. And I, mm -hmm. if you want, you can, uh, I can mention it to JT. Was it along Key Royal, all along the North End, or the? I, I don't remember the, the the egregious one that that brought up the conversation when I was with Rusty was one further up north by Terracia, and that was like, oh, uh, okay. like two acres worth of mangroves yeah. cut down to a point where it looked like grass. And there are herbicides. I know we have during the rating season we have a fertilizer ban now. Uh, but not probably uh, the treatment, the herbicides. I don't treat my grass. I, I don't believe, I don't even have a irrigation I, I, I system. I don't believe that's included. I think it's no, just it the isn't. nitrates and the, the things no, that exactly. nature we ban, but not the actual just like, the ground Just the fertilizer. Herbicides. So that's right. something um, we can totally look at. What that was, the, the fertilizer wasn't much fun, but I mean, we could look at it because, uh, and, and then, you know, our staff brought up something and Misty had um, mentioned it a few times, and I think it's something we really should look at along retention ponds where they allow certain a number of feet where you don't cut mm -hmm. so it can filter out uh, the runoff. And um, I, I think that's something that we can do um, as a board and um, talk to the business community and see how they feel about it because there are things you can plan a along there but um, d and don't cut up with so many feet. And Misty had brought this up, uh, our staff from our, um, what department? Um, uh, extension service had brought had given us a little education and brought this up so I think that's another option that we could use yeah I'm up for any I, I just think it's a, a broader thing I think there's little things we can do instead of just focusing on one big thing like Piney Point which there's very little we can do about we, we need to be focusing on the smaller stuff the herbicides is one of them if there's things we can do with retention ponds it, it would be nice to have staff come back to us and say here's some suggestions on even if they're little things that everyone in Manatee County can do for the benefit of our water quality to start moving us in that direction and Terracia is our county so we, you should report it to code enforcement wherever you saw it oh I got pictures okay <laughs> Dr. Hopes you'll bring that back to us Thank you. Um, Misty Serbia. Yeah, and I just wanted to follow up. Um, yeah, you're going to see some code amendments coming forward initiated by START, mm -hmm. which is our Red Tide uh, to Solutions Red Tide. to Avoid Red Tide group. Uh, I've been working with them, and uh, if, if we just required a three-foot no-mow zone along all retention ponds, that would do a massive uh, good things for our water quality. So and it prevents erosion as well. While I have the mic, I just wanted to say congratulations and thank you, Kevin, for shadowing all of these different departments. I appreciate that you're doing that. Um, and you too, George, if you've been out, I guess you said you also were out, but. Um, not, not like he has, not like he has. Okay. He does a job for a day. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, um, and Reggie, thank you so much for bringing up the Juneteenth. Um, uh, Senate approval yesterday at the national level because it is amazing that our uh, slavery was outlawed and it was two years before the slaves, many of the slaves even knew about it. That's how long it took for the word to travel. So that's the meaning of Juneteenth and there is a lot going on in, in our community to celebrate it. That's all I have. Anything else, George? Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner Satcher. Tell us about your horse. <laughs> I'm going to make comments. Uh, I just I got a breakdown, and I, I might I'll probably post it to uh, my Facebook page of where we're at as far as contributions um, from all the different partners involved, state and local, uh, and private businesses with um, fixing Moccasin and wallow. And I've also uh, made some requests as far as uh, increased signage, increased patrols, um, and putting, uh, you know, the safety of our residents uh, uh, up front in that situation. So I just want everyone to know that, uh, you know, we're, we're working on that. We're, we're uh, building on it and doing what it takes um, to get things moving on it. Um, I wanted to just express, you know, it was a, a work session yesterday. Um, but it seemed like I got a, a lot of support from the board as, and, uh, as far as making some adjust adjustments in the CIP to Erie Road on that east-west section. And so I just wanted to express some appreciation for everyone here for that. Thank you. Commissioner Servia. No. no. Commissioner spoke. Whitmore, did you want to speak on this? Yeah. Well, no, I, was, um, I, had re I pushed it a few minutes ago, but you took me off about uh, Commissioner's comments. I'm writing one out. Okay. I'll call on you uh, in due time. Um, anything else? 
to add? Madam Chair? Yes. I want to ask a question. Commissioner Satcher um, asked a question um, either his last the, the work session. We were talking about temporary lights oh, at Marcus, Marcus and Wallow at Ellerton Gillette. And I <laughs> honestly, I almost got hit there a couple, a couple of days ago. And not just because it's me, it's, it's any citizen or anyone. Did it's we bad. even, yeah, it's bad. Did we even, this is to Commissioner Satchel or to the county administrator, did we even move on that? Is there something that we can do short term, well, right now, to be honest with you, about that intersection on Gillette um, and Marcus and Wallow right there um, to kind of uh, <laughs> alleviate the, 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 man, that was bad for mine. I almost got hit. Bad. So I'm just we didn't we didn't comment on it. We didn't talk about it anymore. And I don't want it to go away. I, I can get the transportation and, and DOT and see what we can do. All right. Yeah. I'd like to see that as well. Okay. Dr. Hopes, did you have anything else to add, sir? Um, just before you adjourn the meeting, I do have a, a, a comment to make. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> and in this, this. I'm wait, not done. I know I do too. Well, she, he wait, said before right. we adjourn. All right. Well, then I'll go ahead with mine. I got an email that I forwarded to all of you. Um, while you were sitting here, that is correct. From Jim Nixon, who um, is trying to get all of the bridges highlighted um, with rainbow colors. So the bottom line is DOT yesterday made the decision that if they could get the approval from Manatee County, Hillsborough, and Pinellas, um, then they would go ahead and allow it I'll on make the a Skyway motion for Bridge. That. I'm not ready yet, Carol. Oh, well, I'll make a motion. When I'm ready. Okay. Really, just chill. So the bottom line is I did speak with LK this morning and uh, you know, there's been a, a huge controversy over this with DOT. So bottom line is I wasn't going to do a letter. They asked me to, but I didn't want to do it without the approval of the board. I thought it was appropriate to bring it to you. So um, if you give me your approval, then I will go ahead and send an email um, to DOT letting them know that we approve. Kevin. We have some, yes, Kevin, did you have comments on that, sir? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Yes, I would like to go ahead and make a motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Cruz, did you have any comments? Yeah, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know. I mean, they, they want to light up our bridge with, with particular colors, and we have to give approval for this. He's I mean, actually we, we just calling went through, me now. We just went through an issue of whether or not somebody should be allowed to Hi. hold something at a, in a mall parking lot. Like, it's, uh, like this, is, this is ridiculous. Of course we approve this. I'll 100% like support this. Why? <laughs> It, it really, I, I don't know why it had to come to the boards for the approval. But anyway, I'm, I'm sure after this, they're going to want a resolution or something so that year after year they can go ahead and, and proceed. So yeah, right we there. have a um, motion to approve by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, a second by Commissioner Whitmore. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, Madam Clerk, it is approved unanimously. Madam, Madam Chair, I also like to make a motion uh, to approve. I'm not in order. Six to zero. Six to zero, Madam Clerk. Madam Chair, I'd, I'd also like to make a motion uh, to direct Ace. the chair to, um, to to give approval to the chair uh, to sign any kind of agreement that needs to be made so that we or can letter. do this, you know, in perpetuity. Second. Yeah. That was okay. All right. Um, so was I'm assuming, Mr. County Attorney, I need to open this for public comment. Yes. These do need. Is this yeah. an action item? So they're going yeah. to be public comment. Okay. Anyone from the public want to come forward on this issue? I can't even believe we had to no. vote on it, but anyway. It, could we please have, oh, I'm sorry. You want clarity have, on my motion? Yes, please, thank you. Uh, I will defer to the county attorney to draw up the motion for me. Well, I, I'm, Madam Chair, Commissioner Van Austin Bridger, you, I'm not sure another motion is needed. <laughs> well, so we've, we've approved it once, but you know, if this is going to be future, an ongoing thing, I would I, like to give the chair authority to okay. I'm, I'm, give me a second, lighting. and I can just be like it. Okay, I, I might be able to help but, here, but uh, can, Mr. County Attorney. It's my understanding that DOT is asking in the future that we do a resolution, in the future, so that they do not have to come back and and have this done individual. Okay. You know, by then by us I would suggest that the motion be to direct the county attorney's office to prepare a resolution and bring it back to the board. Yeah, at the request to satisfy the request of FDOT. Second. So moved. Oh. 
but we yeah. moved But he already it. made the motion. I already seconded the motion. He already made the motion. He was clarifying the motion. Gee whiz. We'll have an arm wrestling contest. No, it seems so, if anything. All right, we... Um, point of order. Can I ask a question? We've already uh, given... Well, if you'd hit your button, I would have known, oh, Commissioner Whitmore. Please I'm sorry. tell everybody on here. Commissioner Whitmore, finish. ask your question, please. Please be respectful. I okay. did. No, I said, you're please. not. Okay, I just have a question because. <laughs> oh God. I have a question because our um, Kevin made the motion. I seconded it to go ahead and do this. Is the other vote is the resolution for future, or do we have to come back in July and vote on it? Uh, I don't we don't know. have this another meeting. Separate. This is for this okay, one. Okay, that's what needed things. to be clarified. You didn't say. Okay. All right, just so everyone knows, while I stepped out, I received a call from LK right. wanting to know if you approved it so he can we move did. forward. We <laughs> did. I told that you approved it. So it's approved. You don't have to come back. Let's just move forward. Okay. Well, we have a motion on the floor for future resolutions. Correct. Correct. I'm going to open public comment on the now motion that's on the floor. Would there anybody want to come forward and speak on that? Any phone calls? I'm closing public comment. We have a motion by Commissioner Van Ostenbridge, a second by Commissioner Cruz. Madam Clerk, did you get that motion? Do you need to? Yes, ma'am. Are you clear on it? Okay. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? It is approved unanimously. Is it six to zero? Yes, sir. You're not in the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> Golly day. Uh, six to zero with Commissioner Satcher not being here. Okay, oh, geez. Boy. Commissioner Whitmore, go ahead. I'm going to do my comments now. Um, thanks. That's, I want to thank the you. utilities. Oh, that's poor timing. You just died. What? We can do it again. Oh, let Commissioner Whitmore do her comments, please. We done? I know. I know. So, um, I want to thank utilities department, literally 20 feet from my house because I live on the island, 110 foot lots by 50. Oh. Um, we had a main, uh, a new house being built and um, uh, broke a water main. And they were out there till 1030 last night and up to their neck in water. So whatever crew it was between 7 and 10.30 last night, I want to thank them because um, they had to come out with all the equipment. It's the second time the builder has burst the main water line. Um, June 25th, I'm gonna, I've been asked to be on a panel for future Leader Academy career exploration with the Uno Dos Now at Manatee Memorial Auditorium. And they take... Um, um, young kids and um, try to get them interested in the medical profession. Um, tomorrow I'm going for a tour of the Southwest District. Thank you, Misty, or somebody had done that recently so and mentioned it at this meeting. So I um, asked because I have actually never had the tour. So thank you for whoever brought that up. This year we're having a 4th of July pra parade on Anna Maria Island, but it is going to be July 3rd. I happened to be at um, Anna Maria Commission meeting the other day, and um, July 4th is on a Sunday. So the churches came out and asked if they would move it. And this is the first time ever that anybody can ever recall, probably happened many, many, many years ago. Um, so the privateers um, asked, uh, they agreed to move it to July 3rd. If you guys want to be in the parade, it's very loosey goosey. Um, you just go on to Anna Maria Island Privateers and you fill out an application and you hand it to them. It starts at 10 a.m. and it goes the entire stretch of Anna Maria Island, which is going to be, that sounds like I can't even nightmare. say the word publicly, <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare. So I would ask, can I ask, and I just thought of this, I, could I ask county staff to put a message board on Cortez Road and Manatee that, that the Privateers Parade starts at 10 a.m. and all roads, I mean, all main thoroughfares will be closed. Um, Did you say July 3rd? 3rd. Saturday. <laughs> well, what, what, Saturday? I just explained it. So yes, Saturday? it's Saturday, not Sunday, because July 4th is a Sunday and the church is protested. Hey, you want to go? Guys, <laughs> let me, let's, maybe, maybe guys, maybe they maybe. have home rule. We, you know, this is yeah. just what's going on. Thousands, I mean, there, you know how many people are going to be out there? Thousands yeah. will be there, let alone people trying. <laughs> We're not laughing at you. We're no, laughing. I know. Let alone people trying to get to the island. So we need to prepare the public that literally from 10 till about 1230, you will not be able to go up and down Anna Maria Island very easily. And um, that's been happening ever since the 70s, since I've been a kid. So this has happened every 4th of July and Christmas and another major holiday since I've been a kid. 
And I, I uh, Kevin probably can attest to that. I, I would just, could we get this on social media, on our county social media? Yeah. Out there so that people know. And Ryan, would you please put it in the newspaper so that people know? Yeah. Saturday, help us prevent the inevitable. Catastrophe. Right. Be sure to limit the inevitable. Could we do like a mass, mass um, media blitz on this because you, we can't handle any more traffic out there now, let alone what this is going to do. But could somebody get with the cities to see where it starts? Every year it alternates. One year it starts at Coquina Beach and it goes to Anna Maria and then vice versa. I think it starts in Coquina Beach, but um, somebody could tell you if staff, if uh, Nick will reach out. Okay. And my last thing, um, uh, we just got a letter from Pam Frenny from um, Friends of Manatee or whatever, what's it called? Shelter Manatee. Uh, she just withdrew the $350,000 contribution to build a new shelter, and uh, uh, according to the comments yesterday, so that's very disappointing. And that's all I have. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. I was able to make my comments during Thank you. the dialogue. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. I was, I think, yeah. all right. Um, Dr. Hopes, anything? Yes, Madam Chair. <laughs> Still blown uh, away. Uh, <laughs> since you will all be on a recess uh, Ooh, in about 30 minutes or so, um, I wanted to let you know that uh, kind of based on our preliminary discussions with regards to the budget and the need for hiring people for all these projects, uh, that I'm, I'm suggesting, I've suggested to directors uh, that as they are currently recruiting for vacancies in their departments, like for engineers mm -hmm. and the like, uh, if they have identified more than one qualified candidate for their current vacancy, and if they have new positions in the budget tied to these capital projects, that they should move forward with trying to hire the additional person. Uh, and we can forward fund the positions. I'm telling you in transparency because the process that's during recess, during your recess is that I would be coming to you with budget amendments for things that occur. I don't know how successful they'll be in their recruitment, but just for transparency purposes, I wanted to let you know that that is what I'm recommending to the department heads. So, uh, because as you know, unemployment rates are super low. It's hard to get qualified candidates, and if they have them in their office, right. go ahead and, and hire them, and we'll work through the process. Um, in addition to that, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm pretty confident that staff, directors, and others in the organization will not be offended if you don't call them during a <laughs> recess. Uh, you can, of course, call me all the time. I would be remiss if you didn't call me you know all the today. time but I, I, I'm pretty confident that the uh, that staff won't be offended while if you enjoy your holiday without um, calling them uh, those are all my comments madam chair thank you meetings adjourned well I hope everyone has a nice recess enjoy <laughs> this meeting is adjourned God.